And then one night we're, we're drinking and she was like, I don't know, like, I want you to play with my <laughs> And I went. <laughs> I want you to play with <laughs> but your I don't know. I mean, just something exploratory. I've never <laughs> had anybody <laughs> before. I don't know. <laughs> I've had fantasies about it. So let's see what that's right, like. I'm out. I'm, I'm getting hard. <laughs> <and> I <can't> <laughs> I like this new Leanne. I like this, I like new, this Leanne new Leanne too, this actually. Leanne, I feel like new Leanne good. showed up at the machine premiere. You is think so? We, is that where she made her debut? No, she got here before that. Okay, maybe that's the first she time. She came back from Leanne. Vietnam. She came back from Vietnam. In March. Back from Nam. Yeah, I came back from Nam. <laughs> she was like, I did a tour uh, of duty. She, she was like, uh, oh, fuck. What's the guy that came back with no legs and Forrest Gump? Um, Lieutenant, oh, Dan. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Lieutenant Leanne. I was Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> so what happened in Nam? In Nam, I went with some girlfriends. I went with one girlfriend who brought two other girlfriends I didn't know very well. And mm. I was roommating with one of the girls, uh, women, and she was just chit-chatting. She's happily married. They've been married like, I don't know, 30 years or something like that. And she was just chit-chatting, telling me how when she got pregnant, she and her husband never stopped dating, which is different than a date night. Yep. Dating is totally different. Dating is getting dressed up. Dating is getting excited. It's to really see having you. sex. That's the let's well, get that's to the, part of yeah, it. Well, Not the, in a way that's perfunctory and like, hey, right. we have ten exactly. minutes. Exactly. It's like going through the it's exciting. Yes. Making foreplay. Every, well, it was about making the whole relationship exciting, like when you were dating. Yep. Yeah. And I just. All she said was, we just never stopped dating. And they took turns mm. like once a month. They would plan a date for each other. They've been doing this their whole marriage, even when they had kids. And I just went, huh, we don't do that. Mm -mm. I think I'm going to try that. Hot. So I just tried it without telling him. And he was like, what's happening here? I didn't what, trust it. I something's happening was the here. first one. I th oh, she fucked me in my car. Yeah, I did. And you thought she was. I was like, something's going on. <laughs> I was like, so, she did something. Like, Because so, that's the only way I ever knew for someone to behave differently than when they did. It is. It is yeah. like when a guy Guilty. has a new move. I'm like, where have you been? Yeah, where have you been? What porn did you watch? Like, yeah. what, or what are you compensating for? She yeah. did that. And then I was like, something's going on. And then I didn't trust it. So then she said something. But wait, I'm going to say it. You can edit it out. I'm going to say this. Okay. I'm going to edit it out. Okay. You okay. can edit it out or don't edit it out. Okay. She said, uh, <laughs> she said, I think we should. I don't know. Let's just fool around. And then she goes, she said. Oh shit! I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> Wait, in the front seat, in the back seat? No, this is this is on another night. So that happened, and I was like, okay, something's going on. And then one night we're we're drinking, and she was like, I don't know, like, I want you to play with my. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. Okay. I was like, something's All going right, on. All right, something else happened. Like, something something happened to Vietnam. Yeah. Mom, besides I'm that, out. I was like, I was like, she did something. <laughs> She's trying to fix something. I've Guilty. seen Sound of Freedom. I yeah. know how this starts. <laughs> I, I, I want you to play with the put your I don't know. I mean, just something exploratory. I've never had anybody <laughs> before. I don't know. Well, it turns out it's not my thing, but I've yeah. never done anything like that. I so never I knew. Like, okay, it's like, it's like I turned, yeah, it was like, it was, it's. All right. But what happened to your face when I said that I, to you? My jaw dropped and I was like. <laughs> But to find play, is it like a... I didn't well, even I know. Don't know. I didn't, didn't you don't even either. need to find it. I don't this know is... either. We're pretty white bread, actually. People may not meat think potatoes. so. Meat potatoes. White we're bread pretty, sounds like... Okay, we're pretty meat, meat and potatoes. potatoes. So I was like, let's... I mean, you know, I don't know. I've had fantasies about it. So let's see what that's right, like. I'm out. It was Let good talking to you guys. Have a good podcast. But I'm, I'm going to go get a massage. This, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting hard. And I, leave. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I'm like, sorry I stole your closer. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, so. That makes me so happy because I remember when I saw you at the machine premiere. I mean, obviously, it's your husband's premiere, da da da. And you just were like, you two were so in love. You were so connected to each other. You were just like, it was just so cool to watch. Oh, thank to you. To not take for granted something just because you've been together for a really long time. Like that, yeah. I don't have a husband yet. And, but when I do, I'm going to do this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's really fun. I mean, not the part, but <laughs> that, that's not my thing. But hey, I tried. But, but just to go like, if we were 20, we might like have some weird ideas. Totally. That, you know, like, because the idea that you already know everything you're into by the time you've been married this long, you guys are, you know, just to be like, maybe there's something new out there that we haven't tried. Like That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because we are pretty meat and potato. We're not unhappy. There was nothing wrong. And just to you know? keep surprising each other. And yeah. or even yourself. And myself. Yes. To keep surprising myself. Um, so we've had so much fun. However, I have been complaining to him lately that I've been doing all the dating. 
Mm, He's okay. just been doing all the like cashing of the checks of the dating. Sure. But sure. I'm like, could you write a couple checks for me, maybe? Mm-hmm. So he's got to, you know. So is it kind of like, like you'll, because I think you said something about you guys got a hotel one night. Yep, we did that. Which one is night. like, that's so hot. It was amazing. Because you don't have to make the bed. Right. You don't have to worry about the, a coaster under the drain. Nope. Like there's something so great about not yep. fooling around in your house where yep. how the crazier we get, the more I'm going to have to clean up. Exactly. Basically. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's exactly right. And just the kind of the the sneakiness of it because we have a kid at home. Yep. You know, so we're like sneaking. And it's because we, we didn't spend the night. We came home. So Isla just thought we went to dinner. Oh. So we, the sneakiness of that was almost as good as the as the that. I mean, you know, like it's so interesting. I'm about to have a kid, as uh, you know. I'm not with the dad at the moment, but I'm really focused on like, you know, I want to be a wife, and yeah. I don't always do the things in the order everybody does it in. Who white, cares? White trash till I die. Um, and I'm just curious, like you know, priority wise, like your relationship still has to come first. Obviously the kid comes first, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. but like it must be a hard thing to juggle. It's an interesting thing to juggle, I think, because there's a time period when the relationship really can't, like when the baby's really little, Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to be like my most beautiful, my most glamorous, my most connected to Mm -hmm. you, my most fulfilling of what you need. I can't do it. Can't do it There's right a now. little bitty life that's right. that I can't say you're going to have to wait for dad. You know, you can't say that. Of course. So there's in the beginning. OK, so the baby's the child's safety always comes first. Well, yeah, yeah. And the child's survival always comes first. Yeah. But then you get to a point where you're going like so many of us ended up being in bad relationships mm-hmm. because our parents didn't model good relationships. So yeah. It gets to a point where you're like, the best thing I can do is make sure I have a great marriage. Yeah. So that my kid is watching a great to see what a great marriage and looks like and how they should be treated. That's right. Even when deserve. your marriage has mistakes, even when you fight, if you fight respectfully, mm. then I didn't see anybody fight. My mom just divorced. Yep. Like you piss her off. She's out. Mm-hmm. So I didn't uh, when Bert and I were first dating, I had to learn how to argue. Because I would go, if I'm arguing, this is definitely over today, like subconsciously. Same. So I'd have to go, I had to find somebody who recognized it. He recognized it before I did and said, I think you don't know how to argue. Mm. I have no siblings either. And there's also, I try to use the word, I'm, you know, sorry to be an anal retentive comedian where every word means something, but I found that sometimes I'm using words that aren't, I used to say healthy, but I now try to say helpful. Yeah. Instead of saying this isn't like... My therapist once I would I would say to her, I'd be like, I just feel like it's not healthy that I do this. She's like, it's just not helpful. Right. You don't have to over pathologize yourself. You totally. know, it's not unhealthy. It's just not, smart. not helpful. And I'm trying to do instead of saying we're fighting, I'm just saying we're repairing. Yeah. You're repairing. We're figuring this out. Yeah. Like arguing doesn't have to look like what we saw. It doesn't have to be no. acrimonious. It's just no. going like we need to do forensics on this right. and make sure it doesn't happen again. I'm not fighting with you. I'm fighting for you. Yes. And, you know, even if it does look like what you saw. It doesn't have to be processed the same, mm-hmm. right? Like, I didn't see any violence or anything like that. I, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone yelling, yeah. you know? If my mom yelled at me all the time. Mm-hmm. But Bert's yelled at me before, and I've definitely yelled at Bert. But it's not the same, right? That's not the same. There's a different level of respect. There's a different level of intention yep. that comes with that kind of yelling. And there's a different repair later mm-hmm. that happens afterwards. Yes. So it's not the same. But, but it's hard to remember because you get triggered, right? Someone starts yelling at you, you get totally triggered, and you're like, oh, this is, oh, I'm gone. Or like, this is, you're injuring me now. If it's hysterical, it's, it's really... historical. Exactly. It's like, this is old emotion coming up. Yes. I probably just need to go for a walk and have a drink of water and, yeah. you know, make some peanut butter toast. And yes. Cr- maybe cry. Yes. And then I Re-address. can have, yep, regroup. What, uh, what do you, what makes you want to be a wife? Gosh, you know, I grew up and it always I just listened to you and Leanne um, uh, Morgan's podcast. And I just it's so like I feel always so connected to you. And then I listen to your backstory more and more, which mm-hmm. sometimes we don't have to have time to get into one on one. And I like we have so much stuff in common. And I'm like, oh, no wonder we, you know, vibrate connected yeah, right so away. easily. Yeah. And right um away. You know, my mom, this is a rough thing to say, but my mom was a gold digger. That's the only way I know how to put it. Uh I know 
I don't even like that term. Because, you can sit with me because mine was too. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's also the, what other currency did women have back then? What other yeah. choice did they totally. have? That's why, you know, I just, the, she did the best she could with the tools she had. She was a beauty queen from Texas. She also worked really, really hard. Mm, um, same in a very mine. superficial business in fashion. She mm. put me in child modeling. Mm. We have like the same. We're the same. <laughs> it's so it's weird. It's bizarre. It's very bizarre. Yeah. And, um, and you know, she had to date men for money mm -hmm. and I would have to go on the dates with them and act perfect. And if I screwed up, I would mess up her chances mm -hmm. of getting this man to pay for us. I, w I dated older men when I was younger. I know this is, you know, going to be hot, hotly debated whether it was appropriate or not. But like when I was 16, it, it was very much encouraged. If you didn't have money, date a guy who's older. He can pick right. you up from school. He can pay for groceries. He can feed you. Right. You know, he bought my mom a watch. You know, mm -hmm. it's either way your 16 year old, I'm sure in her head was like dating another 16 year old. He's gonna, she's going to be dating some guy who's drunk driving and showing your nudes to his friends, some immature right. jerk, right? Yeah. But why not have date this 30 year old who's going to take us to dinner? <laughs> you right. Know? It's whatever litany of lies she had to tell herself to go to sleep at night. I look back. I wouldn't want that for my daughter, but it, you know, it was what it was. Yep. And I just, from a very early age, saw her having to be with abusive men, men she wasn't in love with because she was poor. Yeah. And I just always went, let me just get money mm -hmm. so that I don't have to be in any relationships out of for any other reason except love. Right. Like, I don't want to use men. I don't want to be used. Right. I don't want to be thinking about this. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is what love is. This uh, is Yeah, it's not what you're worth either. Yeah, and it's yeah. not fair to them. It's not fair to, it's just, mm -hmm. I always felt bought. I mm -hmm. always felt owned. I always felt like I was in things because I had to be and not because I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, let me just get money. Let me just get money so then I can date someone for the right reasons. Right. right? Let me just get successful. You know, How's that me... working for you? <laughs> Great. Well, I mean, uh, like, how's the dating and what, how's that well, working? Because then once I started you making my own money, I was like, oh, like, because, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I was like, I had to date men that had jobs because I did. I had nothing, you know. Yeah. And then I started making money and I was like, oh, this is so great. It opens up this whole new pool of like broke guys. I get to date like aspiring musicians. And, yeah. you know, this is so awesome. But then, you know, I didn't quite know who I was yet or, you know, there's that. I can make a million jokes about what it's like to when you have money and someone else doesn't and, you know, emasculating them. And I found that people sort of men would think that I was more successful than them or emasculating them. And they'd have to kind of compensate in the bedroom. I was getting choked and spit <gasps> on. What, and, yeah, and what like, are you talking you, about? As soon as like. Did that do? <laughs> no, no one has. The, I, the Thing I think you have to specifically ask for in the back seat of an Escalade for you that know, to happen. Or a Mercedes. I mean, let's <laughs> elevate know, a little okay, bit. So, I don't know. There's a lot of trucks out front. I don't know what's what. Right. Um, and uh, and so I found myself then going, oh, God, I worked so hard to make money. And now I'm emasculating men by accident. I didn't want to do that. Like, right. I love men. I want I want you to feel like the man. And I'm very alpha in my professional life. I'm actually want to be very beta in my personal life. And I don't mean beta as no, in. No, I know what you mean. You know, like yeah, you I want to be taken care of to in a certain way. And I, I just want to, I like, I like to be in the passenger seat because mm -hmm. I'm in the driver's seat so much. Maybe mm -hmm. that's the better way to say it. I, a good way. you know, I think that people see me as someone, you know, my first couple specials, everyone in their twenties is like, ah, men, so you make fun of men. You're getting your heart broken. You're getting cheated on. I probably deserve to get cheated on. I was probably annoying in my twenties, but I think a lot of people saw me as this like ball busting woman that came after men. I made fun of women too, but you know, um, I think I, people see like kind of a hard exterior, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I really wanted to become financially solvent, independent and accomplish all my goals early because I really do fantasize about being, the wife of like a great man right. and supporting someone else and having these what might be considered traditional gender roles. Fine. I, like I'm into that. I just am. I want to it. I really love the idea of, you know, taking care of a home. I mean, it's the same as producing, you know, I'm mm -hmm. the executive producer. You're running a house, you're running a business, mm -hmm. you know, and I just I love the idea of doing that for a man um, that's doing for great things and being able to support them that for way. both of you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's for both of you. It's uh, that I, I clearly, I am very much into like traditional roles in that way, and I do not in any way, shape, or form feel disempowered by the fact that my husband is so successful and I, I'm successful in my own. He wouldn't right. have any of that though. We're woven together, yep. right? It's a weaving together, and I don't 
on the outside on paper, if yeah. you write down who does what yep. on paper, it's definitely a 50s marriage on paper, mm-hmm. you might think, because I've been raising the kids and he's out making a living, right. you know. I I definitely do certain things in our marriage and he does other things that looks very dude and mine look very, you know, female, but I, I'm super happy and so is he. Mm. And we're both really empowered and fulfilled as human beings that just happen to be living together, mm. you know, and and I want to find that, you know, I, I, I you also deserve it, Whitney. I also knew that I wanted to accomplish all my goals before I had a kid mm-hmm. because I watched a mom try to do it all mm-hmm. and not in God bless all the women that do it. But mm-hmm. she would take me to work with her. She hadn't accomplished all her career goals yeah. yet yeah. when she had me and she would, you know, she did public relations for Bloomingdale's after school. She would take me to work and mm-hmm. I would have to wait in her office. And, you know, she then would have to I would have to, you know, wait for her and I was bored and yep. she, and I was a kid, you know, of mm. course I'm like shoplifting and causing all these problems and she's just trying to work and get everything done. And she's having to take me to school and, you know, um, she didn't really have any help. And I just, I just, I, I was like, you know what? I just, I really want to get all my professional goals done. So by the time I have a kid, I can just be a mom. Yeah. I'm sure I'm still going to be working from home and I'll still be you touring are. and yeah. I'll do all that, but at least I'll be in control so that it's a choice. Yeah. And then I don't ever resent my kid that I don't think I would have anyway, but that was just like a fear that I had. Yeah. And I always knew, I always just said, you know what? I'm going to schedule worrying about when I'm going to have kids. I'm just going to do it at 40. I just, I, I said it when I was 35 to a friend of mine, I froze my eggs when I was 33. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have my first kid at 40. I have also a lot of family stuff. I had two parents that had strokes really young and they were in nursing homes the last 10 years. Like I kind of had to parent my parents yeah. for the past, you know, 10 years. Yeah. So I was like, I just don't want to bring a kid into chaos. And, you know, and then I kind of also, there's something cool about going like, okay, I'm about to have a kid. Like I'm going to marry the guy that's into someone with a kid. Yeah. Like I'm into that. It attracts a, like a very cool type of guy. It attracts dads. Yep. You know, which is awesome. And it's like, how can I possibly marry someone if I don't know what they're like with my kid? Exactly. Like, you know, so it's kind of a, even though it's, you would go, oh, this maybe wasn't what it was on my vision board, but God knows what God's doing. And so I'm just For gonna... sure. And who cares? Who cares? Who cares? You haven't done anything in your life typically. So mm-hmm. why would you do this typically either? You know, I, I've never done anything typically either. Yep. I got pregnant on the pill. Crazy. I don't think I would have gotten pregnant. I don't think I would have had kids. I wouldn't have because I would have been convinced that I would have fucked it up so that massively. Is I would not have done it. Incredible. So I had did for you what you wouldn't have done for yourself. Hundred percent. Because I was like, not going to be a good mother. I do not know what I'm doing. I do not have modeling for this. And I was in the middle of writing. I was writing so much when I got pregnant that I was on my path. Mm-hmm. I was on my career path. Right. And when that happened, I had such, not joking, I had such kind of absolute surrender where I went, well, if it happens like this, wow. then it's undeniable. By the way, and I'm with the right person and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is crazy because I, my mom had died. I went off birth control because I couldn't cry. And my mom, my mom was dying right in front of me in hospice and I wasn't crying. And yes, there was a lot of grief for a long time. It's sort of when you're... Parents, people can relate or have been in a bed for a long time. You're kind of crying every day for 10 years. And by yeah. the time it actually happens, there's a little bit of relief of like, okay, at least they're not suffering anymore, you know? Right. But I was like, I can't cry. Mm-hmm. And so I went, I was, you know, what? I'm going to go off birth control. It I'm, now's not the most popular time to be against birth control. I'm not, I'm just saying for me, yeah, I was ready to go off. Yeah. You know, I was on it because of migraines and this, I wanted yeah. to get off all pharma yeah. and just see my baseline. Mm-hmm. Because the birth control pill, it does tell your body that you're pregnant. It makes 100%. you more hypervigilant, you know, so. Totally. So let me just go off this. I got pregnant within two weeks what? and I probably would have gone right back on. Let's be honest. Like I probably would have done the same sort of thing. And it was, you know. Didn't na- even need your frozen eggs. Uh-uh. I mean, I might use them for something else, you know, because yeah, yeah. like, I definitely want to have more than one. Um, but That's uh, crazy. But it kind of happened the same way. I'm like, God yeah. must want this to happen. Yep. This is your path. Wow. It makes it undeniable, right? When that happens, I, I literally, I often think back to what, what, because, you know, as you can imagine, <laughs> sometimes being married to Bird is a little challenging. 
<laughs> little bit. It was just outside just today. And he goes, oh, you've been, he, I don't know why he said this. He was like, you've been so good to me. You've been such a good partner. And I think I've been pretty perfect. And I went, ha, 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 Oh, no, what? I'm going to go into labor. What? You think you've been perfect? He's like, well, I'm sure I've made like one mistake or two. I'm like, dude, where do I begin? Holy shit. I was like, no, you obviously, obviously it works. But he's not easy. But what I will say about Bird is, you know, I think there's always a difference between a, a difference, pardon, between intention and impact. Uh huh. And his intention, I, from what I know, is yes. always in the right place. You know, like. Yep. You're right. You're absolutely right. But I thought when he said that, I thought there's there's been times where I've because what was modeled for me was mm-hmm. when it gets tough, you just bail. Yep. I, I wonder. If we had started differently, how I would have processed those hard moments differently. Mm. Because it was undeniable to me that this was my path because of the way it happened. Mm. Like we were in love and he'd already bought a ring and all that was whatever. But when I got pregnant on the pill, I went, oh, no, 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 no. This is undeniable. This is what I'm supposed to do. I mean, do. that's like the one percent. There's they literally say like point one percent yeah. of people might get pregnant on the pill. Yeah. And it was me. Wow. So then it just made everything undeniable. So I had, there were very, I, there was only one or two moments. And it was when he was like hardcore in PTSD mm. from Travel Channel where I went, what, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, what am I doing here? Why, I, I can't, I can't leave my kids here. Mm. Like where he was just so wacky, but it, I knew he was really wacky mm. and it wasn't him, mm. that it was something else. And it was, he got diagnosed, he got help and we're right back on track. Did y'all so, ever do, and please tell me if I'm overstepping, because no. I go back and forth between, you know, when people say like relationships take work. I'm like, mm. I have a job. What does that mean? Uh, like, I need to know what this means. Like, yeah. does this mean I have to go do my own therapy? You know, for me, I think that, and as someone that does not have a successful marriage like you moving forward, I go like, I think sometimes the work, quote unquote, is setting expectations, like uh-huh. finding an hour every Sunday going, hey, this is my schedule Monday. This is what do you need Tuesday? Do you need anything Tuesday? Do you want me to be there? Because so much of what we do with the work is repairing a mess after mm-hmm. and cleaning up the mess mm-hmm. instead of getting ahead of it. You know, mm-hmm. Stan Tatkin um, has this book. I can't remember what it's called, but he has the theory of the couple bubble in mm-hmm. it, whereas like. The idea of before you go into a party together. So you and Bert are going to go to come to my, you know, um, holiday party, holiday party done. Mm-hmm. And before you go in, you and Bert in the car to you, you have sex. Um, uh, after, that's a, after that's that. a part of the bubble. It's part of the bubble. <laughs> you go like, OK, how long do you want to stay? I got like two hours in me. Right. OK, have you eaten? Do you want to eat here or do you want to go somewhere afterwards? Right. OK. Who do you not want to talk to? Okay, if I get cornered by Jenny, can you please get me out of that? I, she always sucks me in and I'm talking to her the entire time. You know what right. I mean? You know, I really want to talk. I haven't seen Tim Dillon in ages. Can you just, if I haven't seen him, you know, like, are you drinking? I'm drinking. How much what, you want to go for? it? And you kind of mm-hmm. do like a game plan together so mm-hmm. that when you go into the party, you're kind of like, you know, on the same page mm-hmm. an hour and a half in, 30 more minutes. Do you want to, you can re-up and change, but you know, sometimes you leave a party and you're like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Why did you leave me in the corner with Jenny the whole time? I right. wanted to come over and talk to it. Like, but you just hadn't set the expectations. And I right. just kind of love that. That's smart. Because so often you come out of something and you're like, I was starving. I'm fr- I'm freezing. I'm starving. I want to get out of here. And you stayed for four hours. Like, right. you know, so I think to me, I go, OK, that's something where I go, OK, relationships take work. I get that's a great type of work that I can wrap my head around. Mm-hmm. And then couples therapy, I think people go back and forth. They're like, that's the beginning of the end. Or they go like, no, this is great. You can pop in and out of it. Was that ever something that that you guys? No, we've never done couples therapy. I've been in therapy since I figured out I was in love with Bert. As soon as I figured I was in love, I went, okay, time out. I don't know how to do this at all. So I'm going to get into therapy because I don't know how to do this at all. See, this I love because people go, we're going to couples therapy. And I'm like, but you're, no, in, your but own, mine. you're in your own therapy, right? They're like, no, no, no. I'm like, Wait, no. The, the, yeah, I don't I don't understand that either and to each his own, but I don't get that either. You got to just go heal your own stuff. Well, and it, they heal uh, their stuff. You can't change another person ever. Not ever. Mm. The only thing you can do is change yourself, mm. which then affects change in behavior or an in intention from the other person, but you don't do it to affect the change, you do mm. it to affect change in your own self, mm. right? Bert's in therapy. Bert goes in and out of therapy. He can't stay consistent with it. And I don't really care because I'm consistent with mine. Yep. And I, my therapist knows me and our relationship 
And at this point, Bert so well mm. that she just helps me figure out my shit. When to detach, when to yeah. not give a shit. Yes, when to when do I just need to bitch and be validated because it's useless to bring into the relationship. It's like that, just staying in that radical acceptance of this yes. is who he is. Yes. I mean, when we were first dating, I remember having a conversation with myself going, he's a slob. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? It's the fucking truth. He's a slob. And I thought to myself, this, it's poor form. You mean like his clothes are just everywhere? And, oh, yeah. He's yeah. just a pig. He's like living with a fraternity house pig. So a literal pig. And I thought to myself, it's unfair for me to go into this relationship and ask him to change. Yep. That is me setting Literally me chain up clothes. for failure. You've been wearing or the same whatever, jeans right? for two months. <laughs> but I was like, I'm setting myself up for failure because mm -hmm. I'm setting an expectation up that has to do with someone changing who they are. Yep. So then I'm in the wrong place. If I'm if I'm unwilling to accept everything I see here, mm -hmm. it's unfair to ask of something drastically different, mm -hmm. right? You can still say, put your underwear in the hamper. But the expectation of that actually changing yep. is where people get hung up. So I had those conversations with myself ahead of time. Now, so that when I was in therapy, some of those things that I pre-identified were going to bother me, mm. I could handle with her. I could go, if I fucking trip over his size 13 shoe one more time, I'm going to throw it at his head. Mm -hmm. But I knew it. I knew it when we got married. Yep. I knew that size 13 was going to be in the middle of the floor every day. So how do I, I mean, obviously I complained to him. It's not like I just sit silently mm. like this little, you know, passive. I'm not going to say anything. Mm -hmm. Of course I say something, but, and that saying something is me taking care of me. Yep. Of me saying, Hey dude, this fucking bothers me. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not a deal breaker. This is something that we, because my kind of church, you know, is like ACA. It's adult children of alcoholics. It's like AA, but with, you grew up in a dysfunctional home. You sort of learned how to solve problems by using compulsive behaviors and stuff, but it's not a substance abuse thing. It's just, it's kind of like adult school, adult school. Yeah. Church, adult school, how to, solve, how to solve problems in an adult mature way, not expecting other people to change, yeah. all this same sort of stuff. And something that really helps me that is one of the slogans is like, we don't go to the problem for the solution. Aha, that's good. If you're the problem, you're not going to be the solution. Right. So in, instead of going to the problem for the solution, you're going to go to the program for the solution and take the solution to the relationship. Mm -hmm. And the solution might be shutting the hell up. Mm -hmm. The solution might be setting a boundary. Mm -hmm. The solution might be scheduling when to worry about it. Like, you know what? I'm going to worry about this in two months. Mm -hmm. You know, a friend of mine's getting married to a guy that I know is cheating. And I don't know if I should say anything let me just wait till November 2nd and then I'll think about it then. Right. Because otherwise I'm going to think about it every day all the time and drive yeah. myself not, you know, just sort of the tools yeah. of the solution could be many other, many things, but growing up in a home where everyone just screamed at each other and stormed out and left and got a divorce, I learned the way to solve this problem is to attack the other person, mm -hmm. criticize them. I'm mm -hmm. uncomfortable with the way you leave your clothes out and I'm just going to nag and control Yep. And then the three M's, mothering, micromanaging, martyring. Wow. Or I'm going to try to do these other things to try to get you to change. I'm going to come, you're going to come home and everything's going to be clean. I'm going right. to try to make you feel guilty. Right. So that you never do that. So exhausting. Uh, so much work, all this gameplay. Just accept it. Acceptance. Yes. Just like. Or guess what you do? You hire somebody that picks up his fucking shoe. There you go. If you can afford it. That's your couple's therapist right there. Yeah. Is the person that comes in and cleans up the house yes. and solves the problem that's going to make you need to go to therapy in the first place. That's right. Because now I'm happy and now he's happy because yep. he doesn't have to change his behavior. And, and guess what? The shoe's lady. not on the floor. Yep. And I'm not his mother. And that's a mature way yes. to do it. Uh, we're lucky at this moment that we can afford to do that. Yep. In the past when we couldn't afford to do that, I would just kick the shit to the side and complain, but not nag. Just yep. say, this drives me nuts, dude. And then move on with it. Uh -huh. You know, the nagging is you need to, you need to, you need to. Because it's not personal. It's he's not, not doing it at you. No. He's not doing it at no. you. No. He, this is just who he's a, always been. We're just different people. And honestly. Different brains. I've had guys find my neatness stressful. 
Yeah. It's like I come in your house and I, I feel like it's, I can't touch anything. Can't I can't, touch anything, you know, because yeah. it is. I'm like, no, no, that's the bowl for that's the that bowl is not for eating that bench. Actually, you're not, you can't sit on that. <laughs> that like, I have <laughs> so many like like vintage baskets. Like, no, that's for dried flowers. You can't actually put something in it. That's How a, funny. That's, <laughs> you know, so I've got sort of no, that's the teapot for display. You can't actually use that teapot. Right? You're like, I feel like I'm living in a museum. And I'm right? like, OK, it's like the opposite right. of the slob thing, right. you know, and they're like. I would diagnose them as a slob. They would diagnose me as sort of like a, you know, um, super OCD kind of like, I feel like I have to walk on eggshells. In here, Neat for you. You know? Yeah, exactly. So what what do you think has, what's been the roadblock for finding a, a husband? Wife of the Party is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now, you know, I have been a consistent HelloFresh customer for years. I love this company. I love the food that they send me, that I get to cook, that I cook with my daughters, that I cook by myself. I love that I don't have to plan a couple meals a week or shop for them. I love that their uh, recipes are easy to follow. They're like 20, 30 minutes max. I love that everything is fresh. Holidays are right around the corner, and HelloFresh can help you take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door and it saves you tons of time, which is my favorite. And, you know, the season can be hectic. And that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. I personally am trying always to cut back on errands. I use so many home delivery services. And this has got to be one of my favorites because I know everything they put in their box is fresh and healthy and yummy and easy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash wife free and use the code wife free for free breakfast for life. Oh my God. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's a free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash wife free with the code wife free. That's W-I-F-E-F-R-E-E. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Wife of the Party is sponsored by Lumi. Lumi is a fantastic, I guess, line of products, really. Um, all about stinky stuff or making stuff not stinky, right? They have deodorant. They have deodorant wipes. They have deodorant cream. They have deodorant for your armpits, for your undercarriage, for your overcarriage, for your underboobs, for everywhere. I love Lumi because I keep their deodorant wipes on hand at all times. I work out a ton. I also have a stinky teenager and the deodorant wipes are really great for her too because she can, you know, wipe those things down really quick and we can actually ride home in peace in an enclosed car and not suffocate from this teenage B.O. You know what I mean? They have whole body deodorant. It was created by an OBGYN that saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Uh, This is clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. It's aluminum free, baking soda free, and paraben free, pH balanced. It's proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. Like I said, after a workout, those deodorant wipes are the best. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code WIFE30 at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use the code WIFE30. Thank you, Lumi, for making this holiday season smell a whole lot better. What's been the roadblock for finding a, a husband? What do you think it is? What, I was what's engaged. the problem? I you was were? engaged. It's weird. I got to be honest, and I don't mean to not take responsibility for my own you know, commitment phobia stuff or kind of thinking I'm not cooked yet. I'm not cooked yet. I think I've had a lot of that, a lot Mm -hmm. of sort of there's more to do. um, There's more healing to do. There's more uh, career stuff to get done. I think I have a hard time maybe balancing touring, doing 80 cities a year and then also um, 
prioritizing maybe, um, or sometimes when I'm in a relationship, I'm like, oh God, I got to get more done career wise so I can be in this relationship. Mm, and then it just ends up being, it's just hard for me to kind of focus on both maybe. But, um, but, uh, what I was going to say is I've had some weird timing with, with my parents dying. And I, I know this is might sound boring, but I know there are a lot of people who deal with their parents and health issues as your parents start aging. And mm-hmm. it really does impinge on your relationship. I mean, I know people who have their parents in their you know, living room mm-hmm. in a bed, you mm-hmm. know, because they can't afford to put them in a nursing home or whatever, right. you know. And so when I was engaged, my dad had just died and we were like planning the wedding, planning the wedding. And I just couldn't get over who was going to walk me down the aisle. I couldn't I just couldn't get I was too sad. Yeah. And I was like, I don't like my mom's going to be in a wheelchair at the yeah. wedding. Like, let's just too- like I just couldn't wrap my head around mm-hmm. the wedding part mm-hmm. because I was just grieving. Mm-hmm. And um that's sad. It is pretty sad. Sorry. But maybe that was God going, this yeah. isn't right. Yeah, and this is what sure. it had to come to, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of been like, and then sort of the pandemic. I'm like, I'm ready to put a man first. The pandemic happens. And you're like, oh, God, now it's going to like, at least right. in L.A., you know, right. you couldn't, you know, go anywhere, do anything. So I feel like I hope I'm not making excuses, but I think I'm now a fully realized person. And I always felt like, you know what, I don't want to trick someone into marrying me and then not be cooked or not be a good wife. I want to be able to completely surrender to somebody. And I just, well, can I give you some advice? Please. That's never going to happen. Bert and I were dating and I had that, I had that issue problem, uh, hang up. Also when we were dating before we got pregnant, even I had a little breakdown and he, he and I broke up for four days. It was epic. He was drinking Slim Fast in the shower. It was pretty bad. He made me a mixtape and left it on my windshield. It was pretty rough for him. But when we started getting back together, I started going, freaking out and being like, nope, 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 nope. And in one of my freak outs, I was like, I am super broken. I do not know how to do a lot of stuff in relationships. And you're going to find out. I've and you're you. going to find out. That's exactly what I said. I am going to be too much trouble. I am bad luck. I'm going to leave you before you leave I'm going to make you broke. I'm going to ruin your life. I am a bad omen. I am a really bad deal. And you should not be here. And he, this happened on Zuma Beach. And we were on the beach. And he, he just kept going, I got it. I got you. I got it. I want it. I want it all. Give me the broken. Give me the bullshit. I want Aww. all of it. Because I want to figure this out with you. So let's figure this out together. And I was bawling because I was like, there's no fucking way this guy's staying. There's no, everybody leaves in my life. Mm -hmm. Every person goes, I'm out. Everybody. So I think I was pretty sure he was going to be that person at some point. And I just couldn't go down that Let's cut our losses now. Yep. This is going to hurt more later. Exactly. I'm I'm done. You're going to leave me because you're going to find out. That's it. How much bullshit I have. And he just kept going, nope, I want it. I want it. I want it. And every time the bullshit would come up, in the very beginning, he wanted it. He would go, let's figure this out. Let's talk about this. You don't know how to fight. Let's argue. Let's have an argument. And then you feel whatever these feelings are that don't even make sense. And we'll figure it out. Because I, that's so, this is like blowing my mind because... Yeah, I found my I find myself in situations where I'm like, I'll just get out of this before we fight uh-huh. because you'll just leave. Because then you're gonna find out all this stuff. And like I, I just on. watch people get divorced and storm out and leave. Uh-huh. And it's like if I have feelings or if I set a boundary or if I mess your sloppy, you're just gonna leave. Mm-hmm. So I would rather just leave before you leave. Yeah, that's or right. Let's just Yeah, I definitely That's right. I definitely had that. And I think I also would date people who I knew wouldn't end up being serious just because I was afraid. Safer. You know, definitely. Safe as an imposter syndrome. I think. I don't have it in my career at all. I believe I deserve more than I have in my career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have already worked twice as well, hard. Well, I, I don't think I have it much either. I don't think I have it anymore much. But then I definitely felt like I was faking it till I made it as a human. Mm. Right? That I... I could speak the speak, and I was kind of able to behave it yep. in a bubble, right? And then I found myself resenting the men that loved me because I was like, well, you don't know me. I haven't right. shown you the real me. So when you say I love you, 
but you don't know. It's not real. Because I have done the, the whatever it is, not childish, just I've presented this version of me that is survival so, that is so together yeah. and I want to hide all my flaws yeah. and you're in love with this flawless person uh-huh. and you're, I can't keep this up for that right. long because right. it's exhausting because it's not real and there's yeah it's I'm going to collapse at some point yeah so I can't even because I presented so inauthentically now you're in love with me and now it's like well you're now I always have to wonder who you're actually in love with and now I have to keep this up forever this is exhausting but it was my fault I did it right you know, and I, I had just fear around it. Like, this isn't for me. It was a self-limiting belief. I come from all this divorce. I come from all these acrimonious relationships. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't get to have that. I'm just mm-hmm. this broken comic. I'm, with, you know, around. so that's, I mean, I'm not kidding when I tell you that, like, you and Bert's relationship has been a really big part Aww. of me being able to see this alternative data of that comedians can have mm-hmm. stable relationships. 100%. I didn't have that blueprint at all. I was like, I can never have a stable relationship. I'm just born broken. And then I get into comedy and I'm like, see, everyone here is it Broken. reinforced a lot of yeah. it, you know, but then to see you and, and, and Christina and Tom and all these ones, Rich Foss and Bonnie McFarlane, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I don't have an excuse anymore. Well, that's like, true. I you don't that. have an excuse. You just have to find the right person who wants the broken pieces. Mm. I mean, I found a guy who was like, I'll take warts and all I'll and take all of it. And my thing with that is I go, okay, I need to heal myself so that I'm perfect. But then life's going to break you other ways. It's not, you're There's never going to be perfect. Not ever. I still deal with stuff from my childhood. Uh, Last week in therapy, I started talking about, um, I was having a conversation with someone, uh, with two other people, and one person was talking in vague informational pieces, which was completely appropriate and totally fine. But I needed the specific. I needed, I needed the truth Uh. and the letter of the law spoken. And my brain was going, it's not necessary. You need to just keep your mouth shut. It's not necessary. This is being handled fine. This is totally appropriate. And I was dying inside. (laughs) I was burning. I was like an inferno inside. Knowing my brain, knowing I needed to keep my mouth shut. So I kept my mouth shut. And I walked around with this flaming. And what would be the alternative? Just being, being like, oh, could you be more specific? Uh, I, to, to be specific in a way that was, um, uh, vagueness the, is one of my biggest triggers. I hate way. vagueness. Uh, me too, because you, uh, you grew up with a shifty shady person yep. in your life. It makes me think you're lying. And, uh, me too. And I can't uh, tolerate it. Mm-mm. However, I'm probably overly specific to a fault and people like you could afford me to too. be vaguer. Specific, direct. Yep. Like what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. I'm not hiding anything. Nope. So any of that makes me feel like I'm hiding something. I'm not being completely honest. I'm not being totally upfront, Mm -hmm. but that's not true. It's not always appropriate to Mm. be completely direct or necessary. That's right. So sometimes a directness will make another person feel or react or be triggered by the directness instead of the generality, which is the same exact point, and the directness is not necessary. This is a lesson I'm trying to learn. I struggle because I just want to go say what you're saying. Me too, because I just want to go, here's what you did that messed me up. Now, can we get over it? There's a tool that I actually like. The comedian Rick Glassman said this. He identifies as neurodivergent. I've been diagnosed with I was diagnosed with autism as a kid. I've been diagnosed with all you're, of it. You really? So who knows? I mean, I feel like... The, we were growing up. I think it's easy to conflate, at least back in my day, autism with just a trauma response, uh-huh. you know, or aut- who knows? I was bored in a therapist's office and yeah, I right? didn't want to talk. And yeah. they're like, she's weird and won't talk and keeps drawing. On the f- yeah, I was bored. Yeah. You know, a seven year old shouldn't be sitting on a therapist's office, you know, whatever. Um, but just I'm not sure what all these you know terms even mean anymore. I don't want to um, walk into a hornet's nest on this, but. He says something that helps me in conversations where if someone says something and I just, I'm not getting it or it feels vague, I just say, can you say that again in a different way? Right, right, right. Can you say that again a different way? Yeah. It really helps me because I'm like, I'm not whatever you're, I think you think you're being clear. Yeah. And it's no offense if that's clear to you, fine. But for whatever reason, I am lost. I'm that way too. I think it is because you grew up with someone who. My mom would say that couch is blue and tomorrow we should go, that's yellow. And See, you go, it's fucking not yellow. But I don't want to make assumptions because when I grew up around vagueness and then I would fill in the blanks mm-hmm. with 
dad uh-huh. left because I'm bad. Oh, Mom, yeah. Oh, well, I did that too. Yeah, you're right. So don't leave That's any right. blanks for me to fill in. That's right. Because I'm either going to fill them in bad for you <laughs> or bad for me. That's right. So let's just all leave here thinking the same thing. And also comics, it's our job to make sure everyone is thinking the same thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's our job to make sure everyone has the same visual in their head at the same exact time. Yeah. And I don't think you and I have the same. Vi- and I get very lost and disorganized. Me too. I get really, I get really like a fire hosey. And I don't think you're trying to, I don't think be cryptic on purpose. No. Necessarily. No. But I, I'm, I do have to say a lot. Can you help me understand this better? Cause right. I'm dumb. Right. You know, right, right. I'm not getting it, but vagueness is a big one for me. Yeah. Vagueness is a big trigger for me too. But in knowing that it's a trigger, I spent my whole therapy going, <clears throat> I understand that there is a world where vagueness is actually a tool and helpful and positive for everyone involved. So I got to figure out how to adjust. I mean, like if you're talking about something mm-hmm. veiled in front of a kid and don't want them to hear no, that's it, not the same. you know, yeah, I'm like, no, I mean, <clears throat> it's helpful sometimes when and talking to a teacher sometimes about a kid mm-hmm. and not being like, hey, why the fuck you keep <laughs> making my daughter write an essay? Mm-hmm. She's dyslexic. I've asked, can we find some other way that to, you can test her? Yep. But to stay, to figure out some other, like, more vague way of presenting that mm-hmm. so that the teacher is not on his heels right away because I go. So that you already know the solution, but I'm going to say it this way so that you come up with the solution. Exactly. You think Let's it's your idea. Shuffle around You're a empowered. Bit. You get to yeah, be the hero. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. I love, though, the tool of shutting the F up. Just, yeah apologizing mm-hmm. might do once you turn 40 a couple things happen you get obsessed with hitler <laughs> it just happens <laughs> I, hadn't happened for me has that not happened to you but tom and <laughs> no. tom and Bernard, Bert, for sure maybe i identify as a male comedian mm. all my friends as soon as they turn 40 all of a sudden they're obsessed with hitler and i'm like you guys are such weirdos why are you obsessed with as soon as i turn 40 i'm on ebay getting vintage hitler books no i think it is has something to do with the fact that as you get more tired, it gets more shocking how much he was able to get done in a day or something. Because <laughs> you're just like, this guy was, I oh, right, know. he was on Adderall. He was on meth, whatever. But um, uh, that, you learn the magic trick that is apologizing, uh-huh. which is not like, sorry, you feel that way. Just like truly being like, you know what, I'm so sorry yep. that I that I did that. What are the chances that if there is something going on between us. I don't have a part. What are the chances? Just your ego, yeah, yeah. just having been so humbled by life. Yep. And then just shutting up. Yeah. I didn't know about that option before. I always mm-hmm. thought I had to weigh in on everything. I had to defend myself. I had mm-hmm. to advocate for myself. Just mm-hmm. shutting up. I'm learning the last two now at 53. I didn't get it in my 40s. I'm learning it now. I'm a late bloomer in those two. Because you can always say it later. Yeah. You, you, can, there, you can always say it later, but you can yep. never take it back. That's right. That's right. I'm learning to do that just recently to just stop talking. And even to be able to say if someone, oh, get, what do you think? Like, can I, you know what? I need some time to think about it. Yes, that. I yes. don't know yet. And wa- taking a walk. Saying I don't know. Yep. And saying I, just, I don't know is not a problem for me. Oof. I have no problem saying I have no idea. I don't know the answer right now. No, I, have, I don't have a problem with I that. I don't even know how I feel about this yet. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I need a minute. I need time <laughs> to process it. I, I say those things too. But yeah, that's new. It's really new. so new for me because yeah. I feel like so much. You're of- way younger than me. It's new for me. I'm 53. I'm a late bloomer with those. And apologizing. Oh, Lord, and Lord. Not in a way that you become a doormat or that. You're- no, no, no. My problem with apologizing is tied into the same thing as the vagueness. Mm. I have a hard time apologizing if I don't understand why I'm apologizing. Well, yeah, definitely don't. Right. Do that. I think for me. But Bert will always say. Just apologize. And I'll go, okay. Well, you're going to know. Well, I'm the- sorry, <laughs> but I don't know why I'm sorry. So I, I can't. Uh, it's an empty apology. So I'd rather say nothing than give you some empty bullshit. <laughs> but he wants the empty. He just wants the words, I'm sorry. He wants me to take full responsibility for whatever it is he's deemed I have done that has been injurious. And I cannot do it's that. It's kind of funny because it's like. He's like, we're not going to break up. We're not going to get divorced. Can you just say we're sorry so we can just move on? Yeah. And you're like, no, I can't. Like, I, I mean, look, this guy and I were never going to stay together. So whenever it's like we broke up over this, it probably wasn't this. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. But I did something that he thought was untoward, that was unacceptable. And I genuinely was trying to help him with something. And I ended up 
causing a hassle for him. Uh. Like he had this very stressful thing going on. And then I rescheduled something thinking that it would make his life easier. Right. And then went, oh, look, I rescheduled this thing so that you have less stress. And he, he it upset him. Right. Again, intention and impact. Right. I can apologize for the impact. Right. But the intention, my heart truly was in the right place. Yeah. And his whole thing was, I, I just need you to apologize. And I'm like, look, I can sell this. I can sell this apology, but we will both always know that it's fake. Yeah. I'm lying. You'd yeah. rather me lie. He's like, yeah, I just need you to apologize. And I'm yeah, like, that's exactly the problem that I have with Bert. Yeah. You, but I'm not sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry for the impact, but I'm yes. not sorry for because the intention, because otherwise I'm in, you're making me pretend that I meant to hurt you and I didn't. Yes. See, this is why this is exactly you just described exactly <laughs> what goes on with me and Bert. I'll go, but I didn't mean to do that. I'm not gonna apologize. But you did I it didn't, anyway. I'd admit <sighs> guilt. And then you'd have to live with the fact that you you would rather me be a person that intentionally hurt you. Exactly. Or for me, I go, well, then you're asking me to take responsibility for something that I didn't do. You're like saying you just stabbed this guy. When I go, I totally didn't stab the guy. I was running and I tripped and fell That's and I it. poked him. I'm sorry I accidentally stabbed him. Of course I am. Yes. But I'm not going to own some psychopathic motive. Exactly. That's what I still am struggling with. I'm not, so I when can't. you say apologizing, I can't just go, I'm so sorry that I stabbed you on purpose, but it was accident. I like to, I, I apologize for the impact. I love that. I'm going to totally steal it. But not the intention it. because yeah. impact and intention are two different yeah. things. My intention was, my intention is I would never hurt Bert Kreischer I'm ever. I'm sorry for the impact, however. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to you know, steal that. Totally. It's, it's such a good thing because I was really struggling. I'm not trying to be stubborn here. I'm just not going to own some sociopathic motive that you just, because exactly. you just need to move on. I'm not going to own something I don't own. Yeah. I don't yes. own that. I don't own that. I don't own and, and ill intention. You I don't will own always it. know yeah. I didn't mean it. Yeah. And then in two years, you're going to go, well, you apologize when you're not sorry. And you're like, you're the one that made me do that. I know, uh, right? This is not going on the scoreboard. No, right? Because then when I actually do apologize sincerely, you might not believe it. Yes. I'm boy not going to compromise my own, yes, credibility. I, I yeah. do think like your word is law. Yeah, hundred percent. And then if you, if you waver like that, it is the boy who cried wolf. I've mm -hmm. said that in so many arguments with him. You're going to think I'm the boy who cried wolf because I'm going to start just going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yep, I'm sorry, yep. I'm sorry, and you're not, I'm talking head, talking head. It doesn't mean anything. It's totally empty. If that's what you need, you're looking at the wrong girl. That's it. That's what I've said. Wrong I'm guy. Wrong girl. Impact. I'm happy to apologize for. And yep. we'll take full responsibility for that impact. Mm -hmm. 100%. Absolutely. I love this, though. This is so good to know that this keeps, not that it, it keeps happens. happening, but it's just sort it of. It does happen. And you know, the number one indicator of whether a, a relationship will be successful tell me. is if your value system lines up. I love this. It's your value system that matters. And it's not we, slob, not slob. Can we break this down? Value system as in. No lying. What is a value? <laughs> no, what is a hey, value? What is a value? X Help. plus Y What is love? Z. <laughs> Whitney, why aren't you married? I don't know what values are. <laughs> I don't know what values are. Well, values. No cheating. Yep. No lying. Yep. Uh, call me and tell me something if you got something going on. And by the way, even if you can get away with it, I think because my brain boils down to like integrity. Uh-huh. That's right. Integrity is like the older I get, the more that's my kink. Oh, is and I define oh. integrity as does the person do the right thing when no one's watching? Hundred percent. You can get away with it, but no. then you have to live with yourself. No, uh, integrity is one of the most important words I discovered in my early twenties. It was a roadmap for everything I did. Are you in integrity? We if don't you talk do this? about it enough. It is the most important. It to me is more important than grit. It's mm -hmm. more important than courage. Because it takes so much courage to live with integrity. And, you know, we're living in this time where, you know, your daughters and, you know, I see these girls in their 20s and they're like, how do I get self-esteem? How do I love myself? In order to build self-esteem, you have to engage in esteemable actions. Mm -hmm. OK, it's not Intrinsic to meme value. on Instagram. It's mm -hmm. not liking the post from the mm -hmm. therapist or from the celebrity who posted the quote. That's not it. Right. Are you behaving with integrity every day? Right. Right. Are you building pride? Yep. And what are you, what esteemable actions are you engaging in? Yes. You know, like, are you, you know, you see your neighbor, 
needs help bringing in the trash? Are you carrying the trash? And you're getting no credit for it. Right. God's watching everything, but you're getting no credit and right. you just get to live with that integrity. It's called intrinsic value. Mm-hmm. It took me a long time to figure out how to build that. It's super simple, isn't it? So simple. It's exactly what you just described. It's doing something for, it's being neighborly. And being of service with no expectations. Yes. No expectations. Oh, I'm so, be, being of service has always been so important that my kids learn that. No that. strings attached, no scorekeeping. That's right. that's right. You just do it because it's the right thing mm-hmm. to do. Because that's what you should do. That's right. To sleep well at night. I and, always go, bring, I always bring it right down to, will this keep me up at night? Mm-hmm. If the answer is yes, then I need to evaluate it mm-hmm. very closely. And would I behave differently if there was a camera on me? It's a stupid little. No, but it works for you. It's like a stupid little trick I did when I was uh, when I was younger. I would sort of like before I would like be like, oh, am I going to shoplift? Because I always had this this fantasy addiction, which is, you know, probably not healthy, but I've unpacked it and examined it. And, and it's part of the reason being the ACA. One of the sort of addictions you develop as an adult child is fantasy addiction mm. where you check out and fantasize. Mm, you know, I used to my dad used to watch TV. He'd watch Rodney Dangerfield. He'd watch SNL. And I remember going, like, I need to get in the box. Like, mm. that's how I'm going to get his attention. Mm. That was the first time I was like, I got to get in there. And I would pretend I was in commercials. I would pretend I was on Oprah. It sounds batshit. I know. Maybe I was manifesting. Maybe I was just coping. Who knows? But I would kind of pretend I was on TV, like when I was alone and just sort of, I was a kind of a lonely kid and have, you know, a lot of friends. Um, an older sister, but she was kind of off, you know, older sisters want to hang out with younger, you know, so yeah. I would like pretend I was in TV shows and pretend I had my a camera following me around kind of pathological. And then I remember one day, you know, I went to the the little drugstore where, you know, every now and then I would like steal a lipstick or something. And I was like, but there's a camera on me. <laughs> like I can't. St-. And then I was like, I should just live like that. Right. And it was just a little cheat. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah. wait a second. I would do something different when people were watching than not watching. Right. It feels better to do it the other way. Yeah. It doesn't line up. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a value, right? Integrity. That, integrity. Love um, it. Service. Service. is a value. Um, we always. Self-care is a big one. Self-care if, is a big one for some people. If you're with somebody who really wants to take care of themselves mm-hmm. and sleep eight hours and then you got someone that really doesn't, that mm-hmm. can start to get tricky because mm-hmm. like, then you're kind of like, well, I love you. Yeah. And you're smoking cigarettes all day. Yeah. Like, this is going to constantly be tense. Right. Well, one could say I've been living with someone who's not great at self-care for a long time. Birds so made of tin. So, but but our, but my point is, that's not a big, big one in our value system. Right. It is for you. So, when you're looking for someone that matches mm. you, then you need to look for that in their value system. But I think system. I also had two parents that had strokes yeah, very totally. young. And I had to take care of it. Well, the why doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter why you come up with it. But it also, I could work on that and not take that to my person. You know what I mean? It would never be well, like. Well, as long as your person's lack of that value doesn't negatively affect your value. Right? Sometimes I just go like, I can't have another person die on me. Yeah. But right? that's also dramatic and histrionic and, you know. And based on a trauma response from yeah. real life experience. And sometimes it's a matter of like, we only have, there was some TED talk. I don't remember who it was, but she said work friendships exercise there's one other thing work friendships exercise let's say community service yeah pick three mm. like you know but if you can loop in friendship and exercise great yeah if you can go hiking with your friends if you can loop in yeah. love and extra great you know yeah. so sometimes maybe it's more about you know me going oh we only have a limited amount of time in the day what if we both hike together or what right. if we both you know Right. Get to do something self-care driven together. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, Bert and I both have self-care, t- obviously, because I work out all the time. And yeah, you guys to, are maniacs. We eat pretty healthy. Yeah, very. But um, but anyway, yeah, that value system is pretty key. I didn't really know that going mm. into being married, but we had a guy who came and like gave us these personality and value system tests, and Ooh. he told us. I can Enneagram? tell if someone's going to. No, it's not that. Hmm. But that is something similar. That's something. Um, he was like, I can tell whether or not a couple are going to stay together or get divorced by this value system test. If uh, He's like, it needs to line up. Please give me that mostly. number. Mostly. You know what else might go under value system? Hmm. This is going to sound weird, but sense of humor. Of course. Can we laugh about shit? Yes. You just levity. spilled on the new carpet. Ah. 
come on. Now and, it looks like there's a blood stain on the new car. There's yeah. nothing where we can't fix it right now. Are we going to laugh about it? Or are we yeah. gonna, you know, just totally. Some being able to, yeah, you're che- well, you're just going to check out that girl's butt in front of me. Like, really? Uh, like, just to be uh, able to go for your default to be lever- levity. Yeah. I think is kind of a value system. Yes. Grace and gratitude are two mm-hmm. values. Those are two of the most important words. Grace and gratitude. How would you define grace? Grace is a multifaceted word. Mm. Grace is about God. Yep. Grace is about uh, poise and handling yourself in a respectable and a in a beautiful way. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be button up tight or anything. Yep. Just handling yourself in a way that makes you proud. Yep. Um, it's about you know things happening smoothly. Mm-hmm. Silas' middle name. No, I so love it that. means not fighting, not fighting, resisting what you resist persists, yes. and what you try to control controls you. Yes, I think grace also helps me to think about it. Is you know we, in my brain, whatever backwards wiring I have, I usually think about something in terms of the absence of it instead of the presence of it. Mm-hmm. Like grace is the absence of shame. Oh, interesting. You know because we can say like, yeah, I made that mistake. I'll, I won't do yeah. it again. Huh. I can like have grace about it. I can forgive myself and move forward. So I'm such an idiot. And you know, everyone's good. I, well, if you hadn't done that, then I wouldn't have done that. You know, right. it's just, I can have grace about it. Yeah, you know? totally. Like God saw my motive. God saw the intention. The yep. impact wasn't what I wanted, but I can right. just gracefully move on and I'll do it differently next time. Yeah. So it's like self-forgiveness, I think, is a big part of grace. Yeah, I do, too. I think that's great part. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Grace is like too. something we it's like, again, like integrity, a word we just I'd like to have grace about this. I would like to, and just when I'm like praying in moments, like Mm -hmm. God, please help me to have grace in this moment. Please help Mm -hmm. me handle the situation with grace. Like a phone call will happen that is, you know, might be tough. Just help me handle this with grace. Yep. That's right. You know, help me not make a bigger mess than it needs to be. That's right. Help me handle this with integrity. Right. How do you think being a mother is going to change you? Oh my gosh. You know, it sounds so selfish to say because it already has so much. Yeah. And, you know, I remember thinking like, I cannot wait for the just clarity that comes with motherhood, the the emotional intelligence that comes with it. Um, you know, you know, Donald Glover, the um, brilliant, mm-hmm. you know, comedian rapper. And I've known him forever, you know, and he was always great at what he did. But one day he's on Jimmy Fallon singing Redbone with his shirt off I thought it was Marvin Gaye. I hear it off. I'm like, that's that's Donald. Like, you know, Childish Gambino is his you know, stage name. And then he made that show Atlanta. And I just texted him. I was like, yo, dude, you've always been talented. But what is happening? Right. What drug is this? Right. And he went, I had a kid. <clears throat> just he's like, it unlocks a different level mm-hmm. of your consciousness because you're not such a. Are we talking about gratitude? No. <laughs> no. You missed it. No. What are we, talk- what are we talking about now? We're in- a- I asked her, what, what do you think? Uh. What did I say? I would say you were saying, how is motherhood going to change you? And I was telling the story about, remember Donald Glover, um, now Childish Gambino, was a stand-up, yeah. was doing stand-up, was on Community, and was like, great, great rapper. But then one day, he makes Atlanta, and then he's singing Redbone on Fallon. I I, I was like, I, I thought it was Marvin Gaye. Off, I just heard it off, and I, and I texted him. I was like, yo, dude, you've always been funny, but what happened here? Now you're just a genius? What happened? What drug is this? Yeah. And he went, I had a kid. Oh, for real? He's like, it just unlocks Fuck. another level of your creativity, of your brain. I'm just so excited to not have to fucking think about myself all the time. Oh, that's going to be fucking sweet. Dude, the the just self-obsession and absorption, it just, it gets fucking exhausting. Don't you ever get sick of yourself? Oh, are you being serious? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually side with the people clothes? that hate me sometimes. I go, you don't even know the half of it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have more in common with people that hate me because I go, dude, we're on the same page. Yeah, you think, you think you, I'm annoying? I have to you, live with myself. You think I tell the machine story a lot? I'm there every time I tell it. Holy shit. That's funny. I, you know, I, I started, um, I started, I, I, mine got so bad and I, and I was, I, that I, and I didn't like how I was representing myself. Mm. I was like, I was, I was just fucking pushing so hard mm. that I was like, I didn't like how I was representing myself. And I didn't realize it until like, I think it got really close to me. We got to the end of that tour and I was like, I got to fucking change. <sighs> I got to change. I got to like, I have to do something drastic. And so, um, yeah. And, but I, it's, it's amazing. I, I wish that the rest of the world, and I mean this with, with humility, but I wish the rest of the world had the reflection 
of themselves back the way we get. Whoa. Because. Interesting. It's, you know, we're not just, I mean, I'm, I'm hyper aware of myself being on a podcast, over-representing myself, mm-hmm. overselling myself, becoming, uh, like, not just doing stand-up and trying to write new material, but, like, just being on podcasts and, mm. and talking and, and maybe telling the same story a couple times. And then I'm aware of that. Like, I'm aware of that. Yeah. But then I, if to, it's, you know, to see it, to see fans say, not fans, but people that don't like you come back and give you a reflection of yourself that is somewhat, somewhat accurate sometimes where you go, fuck. Yeah. Like, God damn it. And, and to really disconnect from it is tough. It's enjoyable. Because it's tricky because a lot of times I get love from them on the things I hate about myself. And mm. I go, oh, you guys all just convinced me to love that part of myself because we go on stage and here's like, here's all the mistakes I've made. Here's all the dumb things I've done. And they're like, oh, Woo! Whitney. And then when I am serious on a podcast, like, but that, that wasn't funny. And I'm like, I was really proud of how not trying to be a you know caricature of myself and be tap dancing constantly. I was on that. So yeah. it's like sometimes you get rewarded for the things you hate about yourself and then criticized for the things you're proud of yourself. So sometimes I get confused. It's, it's crazy. You just, I, and I, Mer- you guys were talking about grace and gratitude and I was sitting there getting massaged and I was like, I, marijuana has given me a whole perspective of gratitude. And for the- Gave me the, a manic episode in January, so I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> well, you know what? Dan Soder told me, uh, he was the reason I started smoking pot. And he said to me, I said, we were in Red Rocks and I was like, I'm really enjoying it. And he goes, just so you know, sometimes you're gonna get a little scared. Dude, no, no, dude, dude. I also had just gone. I told her off birth control. My mom had just died. I was grieving. I was also doing that. You know how everyone's just on mushrooms now? Oh, microdosing? I just, yes. by the way, four microdoses a day. That's a dose. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're on right? drugs, dude. That's I mean, funny. it was actually the Burt Kreischer roast is what all the writers were on micro. They were eating this chocolate. I'm like, who just eats a chocolate bar? Like, what a weirdo. Oh. And they're like, oh, no, we're microdosing mushrooms. And it was so funny because they'd be like, and it's just so amazing. And I'm just like, I don't criticize myself. Like my inner monologue is not as tough. And I'm like, well, I just read the jokes you submitted. They suck. Maybe you should oh my be, God. stay yeah. hard on yourself. Right? There's, more people need to be more self-critical, I think. Uh, but I also- Self-critical like, I, or self-reflective? Self-reflective. But that mm-hmm. I think that you turn into that critical person. However, I do look at the people that I grew up with that have not grown mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, they haven't. And I was just saying to someone today, I don't know, but I was saying that I was saying on an interview in LA Times, I was like, there are guys I grew up with that ha- they haven't changed their words that we used. Interesting. They have no, and they were like, like can I crash at your place when I come out? You're like, a crash. Uh, oh, crash. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. They're like, cool beans. Cool so, beans. <laughs> there's a term we used to call, I'm sorry if any of you guys ever hit, if you, I'm certain none of you are watching a podcast yeah, with no. two chicks. I guarantee, oh. I guarantee the guys I'm talking to. Because they haven't like, changed their I'm ways. Like, they're, like, they're like, hold on, hold on. What are they talking about? Beer? Like, they're still guys those guys. Guys come up to me in airports all the time. They're like, I listen to your podcast. I'm yeah, like, me why too. are you whispering? Yeah. My they're like, I learned so much about women. Mostly like, men. the good guys. Same. Oh, dude. I did not grow up with the good they're guys. They're like, I get so much pussy because I listen to your podcast. I know all the cheat codes. I know what to do. I know what to say. That's awesome. They were using the term face guy. Face guy. That was like a phrase we had in college that I haven't said in maybe 20 years. What does and that then mean? face guy is a, it was a way to hide your homosexuality <laughs> and say that you are, that this was a good looking guy, but you couldn't say a guy was good looking back I was then. Like, oh, face guy. He's a I face, like guy. Say- <laughs> face guy. I like that. Yeah. So, like, we couldn't say, like, this guy's really attractive in our fraternity. We should have him in our fraternity because he'll help get chicks here. You couldn't say that. Because then they're like, what are you, gay? And you're like, no, I'm just saying he's got a great head of hair and his jawline's like, superior to ours he's got great teeth you couldn't say that so you'd be like dude total face guy which meant like it's face <laughs> Good guy. Looking guy like he's I not gonna that. he's not he's like not one of the brightest guys he's like you diminish him he's just being a face guy yeah 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 and i guess on a podcast i call myself a face guy <laughs> casually having not said the term in 25 years and my buddies heard it and they're like bro you think you're a face guy? <laughs> Fuck no. You were part squid and not a face guy. And your and, bank account guy now. Yeah, and and so, but it's so funny. Like the it is. I look at them the same way I look at Christians, like that have just accepted the Lord and they just don't have any questions about their faith. And they go, "No, I have to bomb an abortion clinic. That's how I get to heaven." Mm-hmm. And just that, I I look at my friends like that who don't have Instagram, who don't have their maybe they get facebook and they mm. e-message you on facebook but they have no 
self-reflection because they don't they're not forced to and they don't yep. need to and they don't need to grow i'm not saying that i'm like in this like huge growth thing but like i definitely you are wearing bracelets all of a sudden well, <laughs> i mean something's going on this is I mean, uh to is that amethyst no, no it's a kissing cousin of amethyst i got this in colorado this I is like got uh his we got wife, any smoke weed now his <laughs> wife gave it to him my because it's supposed it to, to like calm anxiety it is by the way it's uh, amethyst i have the it's by not my amethyst i'm a big it's, amethyst. Oh, sorry. what is it's it called like, i don't remember oh but i it's was a, he was the, the lady at the shop was like this is like amethyst on crack like yeah. this Sick. is like it's because amethyst it sleep. is um quartz and that is a mica oh. and the mica i guess actually gets into your skin and nice and puts the mineral in your skin and helps that's supposed to help calm I mean, insane. I'm so, I mean, you were at my baby shower. We charged crystals. We did. We put intentions in crystals. I did. I'm all over it. It's funny. Oh, this, I don't I don't know if it's working or not. And is that a whoop band with the. This whoop. Okay. This whoop. Uh, the, I was just I noticed talking, everything about the Rolex. I was just, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was just talking to Tom about, uh, uh, I was just talking to Tom about how we used to be guys who talked about ticket sales and talked about money and like how the when you're young and you start and about the growth you had once you're past that and it's it's but it's funny is that even tom who is a very self-reflective person is that when you're a comic i think you're forced to kind of go inside and figure out what's going on in your brain yeah but i have these friends that don't have that and they don't and they they're they and i i kind of look at them and go god i wish i had more of that it must be nice like they were asking like why I wasn't drinking at the Florida State game. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm trying to get healthy. And they're like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. Have a beer. And I was like, well, no, that's like, I have to work tonight. And they're like, oh, come on. Like, and, and it, yeah, it, but it's, it's, it's funny. And, and not if it's the person who thinks it's him, it's not you. But like, <laughs> Dale. I'm, I'm even, I'm even, <laughs> I'm even nervous about the, my buddies who would hear that and don't hear this in a way where they could sit with that information and go, He's got a good point. They'd be like, what the fuck? You Is he talking shit about me? Like, it's such a... There's two people that have said this separately. John Mayer, sorry to whatever. He said one time, you freeze at the age you become famous. Like, mentally. And we'll get to that in a second. And then Neil Brennan once said, you know, Neil, I would always see him in... You know, he used to wear, like, like a um, a hoodie with jeans and then, the, uh, like, a bright colored t-shirt and then a bright colored hoodie. And I always loved this because um, I was always like, how do you choose the the like orange T-shirt with the purple hoodie? He's like um, yeah. NFL colors or like NBA colors like they match. They oh, must wow. match because and yeah. I was always like, oh, so that's like Charlotte Hornets. You're like, yeah, right. it's blue and purple. This matches. Right. You know, and I said, I would always be like, you always wear that. And he's like, yeah, the year that Chappelle show happened. This is what I wore. Mm. And you go, this worked. And subconsciously, I don't think it's super conscious. And then John Mayer is like, yeah, you just freeze emotionally at that age and you have to work really hard. I think we're the type of people that never think we're famous. So we didn't freeze. Uh, I, 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 I was my when you said that, I go, I can't wait to get famous. Get famous. Like we're both sort of like <laughs> we haven't gotten famous yet, so we yeah. won't freeze. But I think most people that aren't in the public eye, they maybe freeze at the age they got that promotion or yeah, got that girl probably. or <laughs> like made the, were, became the quarterback of the whatever. Okay, okay, or got now, married. Now I got to or... call out an exact name. <laughs> so I'm with. At yeah. the Florida State. And I, he wasn't at the Florida State game. He, but I, my best friend, I've known him my whole life, majority of my whole life. And uh, he's he hooked me up at the Florida State game. So he got me introduced, me, whatever. And so I go there. And this is such an interesting conversation. And all his new friends are in, the, in his box. He's got a box and I'm in his box and it's all his new friends. And they're like, so how long have you known him? I said, since we were like 10 or maybe. And he, they're like, can you convince him to stop wearing visors? <laughs> and I started laughing. Why would you want And I to? said, nope, because the day he first started getting pussy, <laughs> he got he was wearing How visors funny. and those volleyball shorts. Those like fluorescent <laughs> volleyball shorts. Yep. And I said, and I said, That's you will never funny. convince him that that doesn't work. Yep. Because it's worked. And he's now have has a huge box that we're all in. He's not even here. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got his girl, his daughters, beautiful. Like he's got, 
but it worked. So why is he going to switch up visors all of a sudden? Why switch? And they're like, we, we're trying, because I wear more flat brim hats. They're like, we're trying to get a more flat brim hat. Only hats. the go, mascots that have been. We'll never wear a flat. You will never get, get this on his head. He's got a full head of hair. He can, and I was like, and then I started going, what are the things that happen? Like, when yep. does that, when does that happen to you where you go, oh, I'm the, I'm the, this guy. Mm-hmm. That's and I think thing. with us, it might've happened a little with like our personalities. Like I, it's taken me a long time to stop being like, oh, I'm like sassy and cynical. And I'm just like, I'm not that person, but I think it used to make people laugh mm-hmm. when I was like oh, it's a so teenager. Funny. I, I, I was thinking of you because I was listening to you guys when I was getting massaged and I was thinking of you. And I've never known you to be nasty. Thank ever, you. Ever. I definitely am not. I just mean like like acerbic and bitey and, you know, kind of more like on stage or just kind of when I first started, I think it was more and I didn't know you then. But when I started the comedy store, I was coming up with these. I was in the hallway with these rough dudes. And I thought yeah. that I kind of had neuter myself. And I knew I was like, I can never hook up with a comic. I can never date a comic. Like if, if that ever happens, everyone's going to think whatever success. I, I just don't piss where you drink, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think I was just like a little bit. I thought I had to do that, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm sort of like, why did I do that? I guess it was cute when I was like a teenager at family things like or something. Uh, but- okay, then explain mine. So because now that you party say that, guy, I mean, well, that works. I've always I've always been under under promise over deliver meaning hmm. i want you to think i'm stupid i want you to think Ooh. i'm not athletic. no one buys i want you stupid. to think i know but i want you to think that i'm a drunk that doesn't care that doesn't give a fuck and doesn't <sighs> work hard and then and, and i remember when that started is i was so focused in co- high school i was dialed into baseball i wanted to play college i wanted to go pro mm. i wanted all the trappings i wanted i wanted i was cool like i, I was cool and and like I wanted to fuck everyone and I wanted to like hook up with chicks. And then for whatever reason, I, I lose my virginity. I wasn't good at it. I don't go to I don't go to um play college baseball. I go to Florida State and I I'm I remember in my fraternity, people were like, Hey, can Bert, can you play softball? And someone's like, Don't ask Bert. And I was by far the more talented out of anyone in our fraternity hmm. in regards to baseball, softball. And said, Bert's actually legit amazing. He should we should have him play. And we went out and played. And I went out there and I remember playing right field. I now mind you, I was recruited to go play baseball. And I was playing right field and a fly ball was hit to me. And people were guys that were like took themselves serious, were panicked. I remember I bucket caught it, like I like caught it like, like no. almost like shagging flies, like bucket caught it. And they're like, bro, you need to fucking focus. Two hands. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like it was crazy. You had set your expectations so I had set low. To, to them that they thought I would. And then I got up to bat and I hit what could only be referred to as a fucking <laughs> bomb. And even when, Whitney, when I played baseball with Steve Byrne, Brett Ernst, Ari, Steve Renazizi, all of them, I went out to the field. We went to Pan Pacific Park and none of them, I watched and I didn't tell anyone I could play baseball. Mm. And I watched them all try to play home run derby and no one was very great steve brennan he was, he was probably the best but even steve didn't have a ton of power and they were all trying to hit home runs and then i went up and i will hand to god steve Byrne, all these guys could admit i hit roughly 17 home runs <laughs> and they were like what the fuck i think i enjoy i don't know if i enjoyed that but i will tell you it has fucked with my self-esteem because there are still the people that Ooh. that believe the thing i'm i'm selling where I go, I don't really care. I don't the false try advertising. That hard. The false advertising of I don't like. That's why, like when I'm I not ran really the LA, that great. Yeah, when I ran the LA marathon. Because when you do that, they'll believe you. And you're you're making me put something together with you about like. And Nikki Glazer and I were talking about this on my podcast the other day because it drives me nuts when she'll be like, "Well, because I'm just this piece of shit," and I'm like, "No," and I'm like, "What? Are, what is that?" And I like, hate that she does that. And too. we both, and I'm like, "Cause it's I like you true. and your fans like you, so you're telling us we're wrong. Mm-hmm. You're telling yeah. us we're dumb, you know." And then I was like, "Oh," and she was like, "Yeah, I don't even know why I do that." And she's like, "I think her and I both did this in our 20s. It was like, well, because I'm gonna die alone and no one ever is gonna want to be with me." And I'm like, "I put that out there." Yeah. And I've created this reality for myself. Right. And it's not true. Mm-hmm. Like, I can totally have that. I'll totally get married. I'll totally find a man. Like, I'm totally lovable. Think of how much you'd have to talk about on stage. It's brand new. But I. But there was something that I needed to make myself small for other people I, to I like me. I still make myself small. Self-deprecating. Like, it doesn't. Us doing it now is just a lie. 
it's just like your fans are like, when you're like, I'm a piece of shit and I'm not funny. It's like, well, I just paid $80 to come see you. So right? let me know if I should get my money back. Right. You know? And so I kind of like, I, I it makes me cringe a little bit. My first couple specials because I'm like, oh, God, I really was just like, because I'll never find a man and I'll always be alone. And I was like, men are like, OK, I'll take then I won't ask you out then. So if that's funny, your I, would, I would have always seen I think Leanne will agree any guy that would would be lucky to have you in their life. Oh, Agreed. Oh, but I mean that wholeheartedly. I, you Agreed. Know, well, there, I think I think there is I I I'm almost certain there are probably at least. 5,000 men listening right now going, <laughs> going I'm in a heartbeat. These like, I think I had a little more success I needed to get or something or good I needed to get. Like, I'm now at a point with stand-up where I kind of, I used to be like, in order for to know a joke is good, I have to do 50 reps at, in 50 theater. Now I'm like, I can kind of say it in front of three friends and I go like, that's going to work. Yeah. I don't have to put in the reps I used to think I had to put in and now I can put a relationship first. I would always, I would... I would always deprecate myself. I still do it. And I don't know if I believe it or not. I don't know. It's interesting. But like even with stand-ups, I'd, I'd be like, oh, the Bill Burr and Joe Rogan and, and, and Joey Diaz and Tom Segura, they're, they're the best comics out there. I, I, work, I work hard. I'll never be that good. And I don't know if I believe it or not. And I mean, serious, when I say that is I, I do believe. Mm. Chappelle, I, th- I think he's fucking phenomenal. But I have to at some point or I wouldn't be doing it, believe that I can, I, I dare, I'm even nervous saying equal them. And now obviously I'm, obviously I, I'm doing arenas. I'm a, I'm a really good comic, but I would like, I would always deprecate to, to as a defense. And I wonder if those guys deprecate. I wonder, like, I don't, I know, I know privately Tom doesn't deprecate. I know privately that how he feels about himself and he feels very proud of himself. He's very, he believes in his stand up. I don't think he ever goes like, I'm not as good as Mulaney when he's not. Can I say something <laughs> weird? I hate you. Can I say something weird? I'm saying this. I've never said this out loud before, so sorry if it goes sideways. But like, I don't think comedy fans look at us like that. I don't think they do. Well, I think they I do think, with Chappelle. I think, I think they, Chappelle is. I think Chappelle. But I heard, you know, black comics won't why call are you Chappelle. Because I don't know. It's black fact. comics. <laughs> the one thing. <laughs> Um, they won't. They won't refer to Chappelle as a goat. I just watched a series of interviews Cause. where they were like, "Name top five comics," and they were like Richard Pryor, Paul Mooney, uh, Eddie Murphy, mm. Sam Kennison, and they're like, "What about Chappelle?" And none of them. I, and I watch mm. like they were like, "No, no, he's like right, my equal." Like they have no problem being like. That's and if, interesting. And, if, and it, yeah, oh. it was. I wish I could remember oh. exactly. The well, because com- it's tricky. Because I think most people go like. Look, most people can name six, seven comics, ma- max. You know yeah, what I mean? I can name 30. And easy. Well, we can name 100 probably. I, better, I wonder how many I could name off the top of my head. I mean, I like this game. Let's do this game, actually. Um, but uh, uh, I think that they go like number of specials. I mean, he had the best sketch show of all time. It was the most lucrative. It was the highest rated. It's just you can't take Chappelle show is, you know, that factors into him yeah. with the goatness of it all. But I think that people don't look at us as like this person's better than. That. I think they see it as like, well, you're Chinese food and you're Mexican food. Like, there's no. I do. I, it's I, like I know. Birds I coming into music. town. I'm gonna go say totally. I, I don't. Do that, with music. that would be like going, Coldplay is better than the 1975. You're like, no, I'm going to see them both for different reasons. Yeah, no, they but, do no, different things. I believe that some comedy fans are like. Oh yeah, fuck that guy. Like there are comedy mm. fans that are like Yeah, there's culinary fans that are like, I don't like, you know, squid. Yeah, I love squid. I, you know what I mean? No, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. think I think most comedy fans, they kind of love all of us. And I think they see us more as like fighters. Like someone was explaining it to me who listens to podcasts. They're like, Oh, I see it as like matchups. It'll be like Bert's on Bobby Lee's. I can't wait to see what this uh-huh. interaction looks like. Oh, Whitney's about to go do Bert's. Like, I can't yeah. wait to see if they mm-hmm. talk about that thing that happened with our, you know, they yeah. like to see the matchups. Mm. I way. love it. I love when you go like I remember the first time Theo and Tom got together, and I knew both of them. And you're like, what very well. is about to happen? Yeah, and I was <laughs> like, this is going to be fun. What about Theo and Burr? When you're like, that's not how I thought that was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you never know what the sort of combo is going to be. Yeah, I could. Theo goes. I, I Theo goes with everything for me. Like I, I really, I. But see, like even immediately, I go like I think i approach everything i do approach everything as i'm lucky to be here 
I think Which is, I, by the way, comes through and is so endearing and so like lovable. And I think that's part of your charm. Uh, but you also have this wild advantage on social media because uh, also of that is like you're so excited to be doing what you're doing. I'm so excited. And I think it drives right people nuts when they support someone who's a sore winner. Like, that's my thing. There's a lot of sore winners out there. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, I got to go on tour and I got to post about this. And I got, mm -hmm. and you're just like, you're living the, this oh, dream. That's so, so true. fucking brilliant, Whitney. So wait. Have you so, ever heard that term, sore winner? No. It's a great term. They're, they're out there. They're yeah, everywhere. They We're like, oh, I got to go record a podcast. Okay, everyone else have a podcast now. You're like, so they don't, they don't get to find the simple joy in the And you're just like, I'm, I'm at Red Rocks. Holy shit. How like, fucking, yeah, well, like, it's I, everywhere in life, though. It's, uh, I got to go pay taxes. I made $100,000 yeah. this year. Now I got to pay taxes and on when, it. And yeah, you're totally. like, but you made $100,000. It people nuts is when they, it's like when, you know, um, you know, at the Oscars, when someone go, wins their Oscar and they're like, so I'm here to talk about equality. And everyone's like, can you just... Thank God and thank your parents and look excited. Yeah. Like, can you put on a fancy dress and let we're poor, right? Entertain us, yes. stop right? bumming us out, right? you know. And if I'm going to give you eighty dollars for your show, I want to know that you're having a blast. I'll tell you what, the one like I've, I've been listening to a lot of um, a, a great, great podcast called Drink Champs, hmm. and one of the cool things is to listen to their perspective, hip hop artist perspective and not all of them have a ton of money now or not all of them have are at jay-z's level or or at method man's level or they're it's all different they're all different places in their lives but cool. one of the things they that they all seem to do is celebrate life in like a in like a like i'm cool with showing you mm -hmm. i got a rolly on mm -hmm. i got like a I got it. I forget the fucking watch. That People want to participate in your success. Yeah, and it's it seems fun. Hip hop seems fun mm. when they talk about popping bottles or going yeah. to the club or like yeah. going to a nice dinner or like what they seem to be doing now. And I say see they meaning older hip hop dudes, like 45, 50 year old hip hop guys, guys that were like big when we first got into comedy. They love traveling and they love mm. talking about traveling. And it's so great because sometimes they don't pronounce the. <laughs> the place right and so but you but i i'm on a plane and i'm listening i'll call him out i'm listening to memphis bleak pronounced lake como lake cuomo i love it and and and, and then he's we're like, going to cans yeah and it but it's huh? and then and then nori corrects him but it's like such a there's a celebration of life of like yep. of like owning maybe owning your owning your ability we're dying we're dying. Yeah. We're literally dying. You know, it's like every single day we're dying. And it's also, I think when people get hung up, fans want you to have fun. They want you to enjoy your life. They want you to spend your money. It's the. Mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, please. I was like, what? Do they need to have sex? <laughs> um, you know what? It's it, in that purse downstairs with the horseshoes on it. It's in there somewhere. You can just use the purse as the car key. And there is a dog in the back and he's totally fine. Safe. Oh, yeah. But he's giant. Yeah. Oh, just a great Dane pit bull in the back. You're fine. Um, do you guys have workers comp? Um, what's interesting is is when you said that we're dying. We're dying. To ma imagine. I mean, you're flying private. You're going to die soon. <laughs> I'm in a fiery crash. <laughs> imagine if imagine imagine if you're a sore loser. If you're if you're winning in life and you have to hide who you are and you and you can't love how great a sore life, winner. A sore that's it. Sore winner. And then all of a sudden you realize you actually are dying. And then you're like, that stinks. You, you all, everything was negative. Everything was, right? everything was, sh I was shitting on it. And I didn't want I, I to, I wasn't living to my full potential. I bet, I'm sure this applies to me somehow. But like I, that would stink. You were living in, in shame. We just talked about this. That's the opposite of grace. And I think what where people get hung up is when, if you were the kind of person that was didactic about you need to be green and you and you are a global warming activist and then we're flying private. That's what pisses people off. Yeah. People are right. rooting for hypocrisy. That's what pisses uh -huh. people off. It's and it Gavin Newsom off. says, hey, you know, we're cutting emissions and everyone needs to have a Tesla. And then he's flying private to right. Palm Springs. Everyone's like, fuck you, yeah, man. Right. Like, walk that's walk. what pisses people off. Hypocrisy drives me nuts. nuts. Yeah, and I, I try to. Avoid it as much John as Kerry possible. John Kerry has a but. private plane 
And then he tried to lie about it. Like Leonardo DiCaprio, sorry, I call me. But like, <laughs> is he flies, his whole thing is environmentalism and he flies private to Palm Springs for the for the film festival. It's like, everyone's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. when they get you. Hypocrisy is a motherfucker. Just be like, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm flying private. I'm too famous to fly co. Like, I just right? I can't. I can't fly Spirit Airlines. I don't know what to tell you. Can't but don't like there, shame right? everybody else. Uh, I think it's that. And Leo, if you're listening, they do not respect if you buy two seats on Southwest. <laughs> Doesn't mean you get the Have seat. Have you ever flown seat. Spirit? I don't know. No. It's worth doing for just for the experience. Why? I went to, had. I went to the Dakotas, some really remote place. And there was, it was the only way to have a connection. I'm like, let's, let's do this. Like really? my flight, uh, uh, Felicia, my um, travel agent was like, yeah, I can't let you fly Spirit Airlines. And I was like, no, no, no let's just do it. And she's like, no, 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 like fights break out. And I was like, I'm definitely flying Spirit Airlines. I flew, I flew Southwest recently and I vowed I'd never fly Southwest again, only because you you don't get to pick who sits next to you. Nope. So if someone recognizes you, That's you true. have a new best friend. Shut the fuck up. That's Dude, yeah. We are drinking. And you know they have the most um, uh, hospitable handicap policy or something. You notice when you go to board Southwest, it's just wheelchair after wheel. It's like a fucking thriller oh. video. People are just like limping on. Oh, the amount of old people that are on Southwest <laughs> flights. Wild. They go to board and you're like now boarding group A. Georgia was A one, <laughs> and there were already fifty people on the plane. Is it? That's what I'm right. saying. And it's like, all wow. handicap people. Right. And by the way, also the flight attendants always have like a type five. On Southwest, yeah, oh. I actually almost pitched to Netflix. I was like, like with Robbie Pra one night in like Montreal. I was like, can we please do a special? I'll host it of just Southwest flight attendants doing Ooh. like their best material. <laughs> that would be great. I would love to. There's no, there's no. Uh, this is a side pivot, but you know, it's funny how people. There's a real beauty to being subtly funny. So like, just being subtly, just the joke. Yep. yep. I made a dad laugh last night at a we had a father daughter dance Aww. and uh, it was adorable. Edited edited his names oh. out, but someone's son was there, and it was this and he was ten years old, and we were playing trivia, and they were playing music to songs songs to movies we'd seen, and so they're like, "All right, what song is this?" And you're like, "Oh, that's the theme song to Jaws," or. Uh, that's the same theme song to uh, whatever Nightmare on Elm Street or whatever, and the kid didn't know any of the movies, and and they were reading our things, so I he was like, "What song is that?" So he was cheating, but he was doing it to me, and I was like, "It's a movie, Kramer versus Kramer," and he was like, "Okay," and so he wrote it down, and I couldn't stop laughing. He's like, "What's the next song?" I go, "Schindler's List." <laughs> Oh my like, God! You were just telling him. That. Oh my God! And one of the dads said, "Did you just tell him Kramer versus Kramer?" And I went, "Yeah." And he goes, "It's not the answer." I go, "Yeah, I know." And he goes, "He goes, boy, he wrote it down." I go, "Yeah." He goes, "How do I spell versus?" I go, "Just V S." And I, and it, but it was like, I was like, I really honestly thought I haven't been funny in a while. Like funny, like in society, funny, like. Where the joke isn't for everyone. I agree with it. I, for myself, I fucking agree. Yeah. Like, everything's about... But it's so fun, that simplicity. That kind of good, clean fun that's just super simple. Not thought through, not complicated. Just playing a fucking board game with your family, you end up having so much fun and being funny. Do you remember, do you remember when... I can't, everything for me compartmentalizes into can I fit into the act. Mm -hmm. The hardest we've ever laughed, me and Isla, we were playing a game called Ruma Cube with Leanne, Ruma Cube. Oh and my God. Isla and I were winning. And I was, I'm sure I was drunk. And Isla and I were doing these French accents to each other. <laughs> and Leanne did not like it. And it was bothering her. <laughs> and the fact that it was bothering her made us laugh so Even hard. Harder. Like you got the giggles. Yeah, you get yeah, the giggles getting in a the way. Giggles. Yeah. It's the best. Best. And it's And it's like, there's so much of that that I, and maybe I just, I've lost touch with it at times because I'm thinking about, about the business. But last night I went, you know, there's so there are some comics that do that just for you like Todd Glass, Doug Stanhope, oddly enough. Like mm -hmm. they they just are silly, funny. And you're and you forget like you get so stuck in this fucking like Kevin Christie and I went on the road. Like I have a couple co comic friends that we have little dumb things like, you know, like we'll like walk past each other and just like to like to like it's so stupid. But it's <laughs> 
<laughs> but just something like too intimate and dumb, <laughs> like, you oh. know, and like silly shit like that, where it's like, I guess when you're always trying to fit something into the act, you're not like, I forgot to just be funny all the time and not only do it for public consumption. But that's what you're getting when you have this baby. You're yep. going to get you're going to get a lifetime of inside jokes. Just silliness. It's huh? the funnest. And nicknames. Dude, uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld <clears throat> said once, he said, he was like, your kid comes up to you and says, the, you're like, well, that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. I'm a yeah. comic and that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. yeah. And then they run off and then 20 minutes later they come back and then they say something else and you're like, well, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. And it just goes on yeah. and on and on for 18 years. Tom, One of Tom's sons is fucking brilliant. Is just fucking. The other? One of them is just the softest, <laughs> sweetest person. The younger? He's really, that, so the, I'm sure the older birth one. Birth order, the older, the older I get, the more I feel like birth order is just. The older one is got to be Christina. It's got to be Christina. And then mm. the younger one's Tom. Because Tom is, you know, knowing Tom, he's a very, he is a very soft, sensitive dude. Mm. He's very introspective, very quiet. That's his youngest one. I'm sure they'd have different assessment. I'm just saying from my perspective mm. and his oldest one. He said things to me that as only having had kids as long as I've had, and, and I'm and now I can mm. pick out good kid material. Like I mm. go, fuck, that's good. You could make that into something great. Mm. Fucking that his son Julian has said some of the fucking most. <laughs> he's done just a fucking. Con- they have, they they had to. I mean, there's so much. I walk through their house and I go. Like they, I walked in one time and, and they had, you know, those little doggy gates. Mm-hmm. They had three of them on the door all the way to the top. And I go, what is this? And they go, oh, he climbs a lot. And I go, <laughs> Tommy caged him in a room. And he goes, I know he can get out. And I go, you can also just shut the door. And he goes, doesn't work. <laughs> so they have their kid in a cage. I mean, I just couldn't stop laughing. I mean, I'm honestly like, I, I had Southern parenting. I mean, I just have to make sure I don't pinch anyone. Right. Because pinching was big. Oh, yeah. Oh. Pinching was big. When you were throwing a tantrum in the yep. grocery store, when you were yelling at the restaurant, mm-hmm. it was just right yep. either the ear to go out you know, because like if you didn't want to leave somewhere, you would just sit on the ground. Yep. Yeah. And your parent would have to drag you out. The pinch is that's that mine was can't... right here, Ooh. right here under your arm. Man, is that illegal now? We, we called them spider bites. You did. <laughs> of course you did. Wait, you were you guys? That. Were you guys understood as kids? No, fuck no. Are you no. kidding me? There wasn't. Okay, so I see this thing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to be tempted to do this. Where parents want to be friends with their kids. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Leanne. Mm. Don't do that. You're not friends. No, and no, I no, can't. No. Und- I- Why are you laughing? Right. <laughs> Don't do that. She right. Just did it, did it. She let Georgia know I am not your friend this weekend. It was parents weekend. We can still be homies. But when push comes to shove, I'm still. We've got rules. The problem is, I think what happens with parents is they're afraid that their kid won't like them. So then Even they'll better. do whatever to make the kid like them. So you, you don't have to like me. Mm-mm. You have to respect me. That's right. And it doesn't mean like, you won't respect me. I mean, Mm-mm. no, no, no. We have rules and we have boundaries and they will be upheld. That's it. Mm-hmm. And you don't have Period. to hit a kid. Nope. You, the, the problem, what, what really frustrates me is that I see parents not understand. I think you won't have this problem because you have dogs and horses. Mm-hmm. And I cannot tell you how similar a lot of parenting is to dogs and horses. Yep. yep. Is the simple rules are the most important rules. Bedtime, eat a healthy meal before you get candy. Mm-hmm. Um, say please and thank you. And the consistency of that. Uh, no, no, no. The, them being absolute. Mm-hmm. Not there's. I don't cave this one day and then it's. This is yeah. the way we live our life. That's right. Period. You go to bed at 730 every night. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Christmas is a different rule or, you know, so we decide we're going to go to a play. Mm -hmm. But every single day, if there's not something really special happening, Mm -hmm. 730 is your bedtime. Period. This is the routine to go to bed. But what happens with kids is it. It lets them relax. That's right. They need they, walls. They, they need, same need with the animals. So they can you put them in a crate the wall, and they're happier. Hundred so. mm-hmm. percent. But p- parents don't do that. Oh, nope. let him stay up a little later. They need to know where oh, the walls he are. He had one bite of chicken nugget. Now he can have a half a gallon of ice cream. Where I'm just going, my mind is blown. You don't want to have a fight with this kid. And it's kids' job to test ice you. cream. They're going to keep That's testing their and testing. entire job. So as Especially they become girls. teenagers. 
those boundaries look a little different. Mm -hmm. They're not about bedtime. I don't care when you go to bed now anymore. Not really. You're Mm -hmm. a teenager, right? They look like, how about we have a drink together? And Mm -hmm. I go, you're 19. Yeah. It's illegal. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't sign off on that because it's illegal. I'm not an idiot. I know you're drinking. You're in college like everybody else is in college. But I'm not participating in that behavior because my participation condones you breaking the law. That's right. And I'm not going to do that. And then if you go break the law and I say, why did you do that? I have no, no leg to stand on. Exactly. Because I'm now, not, not saying this because you're an idiot and you don't know the difference, but I'm, we agreed to live in a society that has a set of laws mm-hmm. that we are agreeing to abide by. Mm-hmm. So for me to go, not that one. Well, what other one do you get to say? Well, not that one either. Mm -hmm. And then what rule do you get to say? I can cheat on my husband because I also can do this and Mm -hmm. break this rule. You do break rules. That's part of figuring out who you are. But it's the opposite of what about where's the integrity? But as the parent, you just can't sign off on it. That's my opinion. And that's how I've decided to parent Mm. is that I'm not going to say, yep, come to our house and have a drink. Nope. I'm not buying you booze. Nope. I don't want you at my house drinking. Have kids shown up at my house drinking? They have. Mm. I'm not going to kick them on the street, but I'm not allowing it in my house. My dad, his thing was always, and he had a lot of flaws and was gone a lot. His whole thing was, it should always be harder in in here than out there. Interesting. If I haven't prepared you for the world, you're going to get your ass kicked out there. Was your dad Denzel Washington? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, the guy from the, the drumming movie. Yeah, yeah. I sat next to him on a plane the other day. He's brilliant. I sat Who's next to him on a plane. The Miles Teller movie? Yeah, um, that is Miles Teller. Uh, Drumline? Uh, no, no, it's... it's uh, Whiplash. They, Jesus, was that the... It's Halston. The, it's Charlie. It's the, it's the talking bush. Just, it's the Lord. <laughs> the, it lights the, on Charlie's fire, Angels too. Box. Panther with the, the tiara. The Charlie's oh, Charlie. Angels I sat next to him, J.K. Rowling's. Yeah, he's brilliant. He, oh, My dad did a couple things... Gr- J.K. Oh, Simmons. J.K. Well, Simmons. Oh, not Rowling? Hey, hey, He's hey. He's very anti trans <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was in Juno, too. He was the dad in Juno. Uh, he he uh, sat next to me on a plane, and we had a rough takeoff. And as I would to anyone, I looked at the guy next to me like, oh. <laughs> and I think he thought I was trying to, uh, like, I was staring at him. Do you ever hang out with, like, see a celebrity who doesn't recognize you? That guy. And they- <laughs> <laughs> that guy and I and I'll I'll say this to JK JK Simmons. This is who I am. I'm Burt Kreischer because he wanted to ask. I know he did because I got recognized like five times. I was just saying. I got recognized so much on that flight. Everyone that walked by recognized me, and he is also a human being. So I'm sure the curiosity gets at everyone. People, I do it too. He, I know he wanted to go. Who the fuck are you? But he has been in that situation, yep. so he knows not to do it. Because it is a weird, obnoxious thing to go. Who are you? Because and then it's, but it's normal. It's very normal. He wanted to ask who I was. I know he did. But also, there's something about him going like, "Let me just be, let you be a regular guy." I'm gonna with let me. you be a regular guy. Yeah. But you all, I did stare at him at takeoff because I was scared, and he just was like, "We fly into Fort Lauderdale on uh, JetBlue." Yeah, JetBlue. I love time. JetBlue. I like JetBlue too. Me but too. you guys keep talking. I feel like no, I, I ruined. Saying, no, you didn't. But I love that. No, you're. Um, no, I was just say my ruined. dad. I think did two things. Tell me if this is good parenting or bad parenting. I think he did a couple things by accident. Really good. When I was like 15, he went. I know you're gonna drink. I know you're gonna do drugs. I know your friends are gonna do drugs. Here's the deal. If you get in a car with somebody who has been drinking or smoking weed, uh, and I find out, you're never leaving the house again. Mm. And if you call me from a payphone, whatever, and tell me, hey, this person's smoking weed and I'll come get you. Mm-hmm. No questions asked. Yeah. Zero punishment. That's Zero. What we did. Yeah, that's what we did. Zero. The B-man killed it. Yeah. <laughs> Georgia Kreischer. Georgia Kreischer one time. Leanne calls me. I'm on tour. She calls me. She's like, well, we've had an issue. I said, what's up? She said, Georgia. Uh. I got a call from Georgia last night, and she's not where she says she is. She's out at a party. She drove everyone out there. They've been drinking vodka, and I just called her, and she admitted she's drinking, and she can't drive, and so I have to go pick her up. Mm, and That's not the story. Well, 
That's not the story. Ladies at and all. gentlemen, you wonder well, why who gets people paid to tell the stories. <laughs> I, t- I promise the story you, mine's better than is, hers. She had told me she was going to be at the house, uh, and I was calling her, and she wasn't answering because I I needed her for something. And then I started getting worried about her, and so I looked on her Life 360, and she was in a completely different city. Like she was supposed to be in Woodland Hills, and she was in Valencia. And I went, what the fuck? And so I texted her and was like, call me right now. I asked her where she was. She told me she was like, lie. Mm. I asked her if she'd been drinking. She said, no, lie, Mm. number two. And then she told me she was going to spend the night somewhere. And there was a boy also spending the night. And I went, I, I finagled my way into getting to her to admit that she'd been. I said, okay, you lied to me because I know you're not a I see you on Life 360. You're in Valencia. I don't know whose house you're But are we off the hook for the lying if you're drunk and the lying only happens no. because well, no, you're no, drank? No, no, no. Is that no. one this offense? Is where the my lying. Comes in. The lying. Because I go, well, she was problem. drunk. We're all lying when we're drunk. No, no, yeah. no. But the lying, I was like, you don't get. You don't get to fucking lie to me. Yeah. You the other stuff. It's like if you cheat on your wife and she goes, "Did you wear a condom?" and you go, "Is it better if I wore a condom?" <laughs> yeah, because then I would have right? planned it out. <laughs> right. I, I remember yes. someone hearing that someone cheated on their wife and, and it's like and it got worse. I didn't wear a condom, and I was like, "Would it have been better if you wore a condom?" You still fucked another woman. <laughs> yeah, like, but it's also that fuck? means you were even more um, planning prepared it, right? about it. Who wears a condom when they're cheating? <laughs> Well, that's exactly when you should be wearing one. Exactly. But it'd be weird if you had one on you. That means you planned it. You planned it. it. It's premeditated. Yeah. Keep going. But so all that happened. But anyway, yeah. so then I'm like, then I need you to drive home. And when I said that, she was like, I can't drive. Well, I'm drunk. Yeah, and I can't. said, no problem. Then I'm coming to get you. And I said, let me make this clear. I'm coming to get you because you lied to me. Mm. Not because you were drinking. Mm. but And you're you're not in trouble because you didn't get in the car. And well, you didn't drive hold home. On, hold on, hold but on. But you're in trouble because you're... you fucking lied to me twice. Well, now hang on. Now, now this you're in isn't. Trouble. No, this isn't. That's what happened. Well, hold on. You're taking out all my amazing parenting out of this story. <laughs> you haven't even been called yet. I called him the next day and went, "We got a problem," and explained all that to him. And I said, "But we need to reward her because she did the right thing by not driving." That's right. I said, mm. "So if you give her the treat." For saying you didn't drive, but she said she was going to drive, and you said, "No, you're not. I'm coming to get you." No, she originally said. I said, have you been drinking? And she said, no. And then I said, then I'm going to need you to drive home. And she went, I can't drive. Actually, I've been drinking. Okay. And then I went, now that's two fucking lies I've been seeing you in. And I'm coming to pick your ass up because you lied to me. We always say you're off the hook for not driving. Exactly. You you weren't going to drive, and that's good. Okay. That you're off the hook for. But you were on the hook for lying to me twice. Because what we'd always, again, that's a value system. Just don't lie. Mm. Like, and I get it. As teenagers are going to lie. You got to do yep, some of the yep, lies yep, you yep. have to let them And they go, you know what? With. I'm not going to do that again. That didn't go so well. Exactly. You have to you have to figure out what lie to really hold them accountable for when mm-hmm. they're a teenager. Because a teenager's job is, is to, to lie yep. to find their autonomy. Mm. Like they don't want you running their life and they can't run their own life. Mm. So they just constantly push you out of everything. But sometimes if the lie is so egregious, like... I said to her, what if there'd been a natural disaster? And I thought you were like, mm-hmm. and you'd never communicated to me that you went to another fucking city entirely. Mm. And I couldn't find you. Mm. What if all these big bad things had happened? All you had to do is pick the phone up and go, hey, we're not at, we're at so-and-so's house and we would have no issue at all. Yeah. You weren't driving. You weren't doing anything unsafe. That's my problem. Mm. And so that was the lie that I decided I was going to be a hard ass on. They she say that having um, like the top, I've been reading, there's this book, um, Hunt, Gather, Parent, that I really like that's about not being a helicopter parent mm-hmm. and le- letting them, you know, um, not hovering get and, letting them, and- yeah, letting them get dirty, letting them, like you don't intervene unless it's about to get physically dangerous. Like yeah. I go, I've been going to my friends to little playgrounds and shit, which by the way are so different now. They're like yeah. mushy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like bouncy and shit. I'm they, like, they got CTE protocol. I'm, dude, I'm like. No uh, concussions. Dude, Completely the different. slide is plastic. Yep. I'm like, we had a metal. Burn your ass Skillet. Yep. You know? like, what is all the, Dude, we had a chain 
like a pirate chain. Like you would climb up a chain that would like pinch your hand. <laughs> right. Oh. I'm like, I'm like, where's the thing that flips over three seconds? Do you remember right? how dangerous a seesaw was? <laughs> Dude, yeah. Do you remember being like on whiplash. a seesaw <laughs> when the one guy decided he was done and you'd no, get fucking you, no. ball slammed to the ground? It was on purpose. You'd wait and you'd hold it and you'd jump off to watch them careen yep. to the ground. Dude, I literally said this the other day. I was like, when's last compressed spine from a when, fucking when's the last time you saw a kid in a cast? Dude? Dude, they don't even get injured anymore. <laughs> we used to have a cast that went from the the it had a bar, like a metal oh, yeah. bar. Was set up. I remember we, that, yeah. We would, and then we had a one that would go all the way up to the left. We would sign casts like first period. Oh, everyone broke yeah. an arm. That's all we did. Remember, Climbing a tree was a fucking now the, in hindsight, you go, Oh, that's so dangerous. Remember the the fucking jungle gym? It was just scaffolding. You would yep. just and hang upside down. I mean, it was bonkers. My playground was tires. <laughs> Dude, we would get in tires. tires and roll down hills. Yes, totally. Inside a tire. Totally. It was, it was fucking bonkers. And anyway, so I'm going with my friends to these incredibly safe playgrounds. And they're like, don't jump on that. Be careful. You're going to hurt yourself. And I look at the kid, look at the parent and be like, then why did you bring me here? Yeah. Th they're confused. Yeah. yeah. And don't fall. And you're going to hurt yourself. And they're like, so should I go on this or not? And I'm just like, you got to let them go and don't intervene until the last fucking minute. Well, that kind of talk. We stopped when the kids were really little. As I was like, don't say you're going to fall. Or you're going to oh, get hurt. Uh, that was me. That I, was, I me. was like, well, don't would, talk to I, him I, like my that. Dad, my dad used to, it's in hindsight, it's a form of uh, becoming a god. Is mm. he would let, he would see you do the thing. Mm. Then he would predict the outcome before it happened. And then it would happen and he'd go, I told you. But it only happened because you put in my head that it yeah. would. And, or, yeah. or I was doing something so egregious where you're like, you should have just stopped me. Like, I remember I had an orange in my hand and I had the knife and I was cutting the orange this way. My dad's like, that's not how you want to cut it. And I was like, dad. And he goes, you're going to cut your hand. Keep going. And I was like, I think I'm bleeding. Oh, oh my God. And then I was like, why wouldn't you just take the knife out of my hand? And he was like, I told you. And Do you so, know about avocado hand? What? It's one of the main uh, things that people are admitted for the ER in LA because they make so much avocado toast. It's oh just a God. knife through the hand oh of someone God. taking the pit out of I did an that. avocado. I did that with a vitamin E tablet. You can still see the scar right Jesus. there. Jesus. I had a vitamin E tablet here and I had a knife trying to poke a hole in it. It wouldn't go. And all of a sudden it went way too fast. Oh and I went into the hand God. and I went, oh. <laughs> Oops. I, I, uh, you're gonna be a great mom, Whitney. I don't think you need to worry about it. You're gonna be such a good mom. You're gonna be I'm great like, mom. I'm kind of psyched. You should be. I'm starting to get psyched. You're gonna be great. I'm glad it's, I, I gotta be honest. I want a girl next, but a boy, I feel like you can fuck up a little Wait, more. Wait, what? Yeah. You know? I don't know. It's just a different. Even the, different. even all the things that you could have fucked up are all socially acceptable now. Yeah. Like if you're like, the only thing a mom would have done to their son is make him gay, and that's totally cool now. People like back are, in the day, people, you, that, that would be like the thing, like, oh, come on, you're being too soft on him. He's going to be gay. But now it's like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, be, he'll get a, jo a sitcom. Yeah. But no, I, I'm not, I'm very, this whole gender, I grew up poor, like, I just did a special where I talked about, like, when you grew up poor, you're whatever gender your older sibling was. Like, you don't get to pick, like, when you have... Ha <laughs> When you have the money to buy your own shit, you can be whatever you want. But right. I'm not. Yeah. We're just. I bought the thing. I bought the clothes already. You're wearing the clothes, right? That I fucking bought. Keeps on going For down, now. down, 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 down. You know. You're gonna have so much fun. I'm kind of psyched. It's I don't so know what to fun. name that. No, nothing goes well with Cummings. Mm. It's tough. I want to do Max, and that can't do. Can no, you? no. Max One of my Cummings favorite runners, man. Steve Prefontaine, but you can't call him Pre. <laughs> Pre -com, no. Maximus, I want Maximus pre -com. Are no. you go, uh what what uh right now I'm on Henry. What here's the deal with you. Henry's good. okay. You've always been go. good at everything you've ever done. Really? Yeah, of course. Well, I, yeah. Think, what do you mean, really? Yeah, yeah. Of course. But I waited Even you a... started you started podcasting late in the game and quickly took it over. I mean, you're everything oh. you decide what you you are someone who you're like Leanne in that when we you are, decide to do something, you do it right so and you similar. do it with everything you have. You read books about it. You fucking focus. Like when Leanne is done with something, she's done with it forever. It's it, she just has a mindset that it's like, I'm not like that. I still fuck with it. You know, like even drinking, like I, I'll never quit drinking because I don't think I ever 
I don't have that brain. Leanne quit drinking. Was like, I'm done drinking. Didn't drink for seven fucking years. Oh, was it? And then one day, I was like, I think I want to drink. And then just never thought about it. Never talked about it out loud. I'll talk about it a million times. But you're everything like even just the silliest thing like basketball. You're still better than. 90 percent of the guys i know playing basketball <laughs> so like nice. you just the way your brain works when you do something you just figure it out you just you just do i right. also have a like pathological need to like measure twice cut once and like i mean podcasting i waited and waited because i was like let me learn how to do this first i don't have the arrogance of like oh i'm just as good like i coming from sports i believe like you have to work hard as shit mm -hmm. and things should be hard in order to be good at something i'm changing that self-limiting belief but i was like let me watch everyone's podcast let me see what they're doing God. let me see what's working let me like learn from them and then i was like let me be a guest on everyone's podcast to see what they're doing okay this is just a conversation i don't have to overthink it i don't have to you know but it took me a long time to underthink it and be able to be authentic on podcasts so same with like finding a husband and having a kid i was like let me wait till i know i'm gonna be good at this let me like undo all the wiring from and programming and the mm -hmm. shitty shit from when I was a kid. Let me get all my goals accomplished so I don't resent the kid. Let me like be the perfect person before I marry someone. But now I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm ready. Sports is a great analogy. Sports is so sports great. Is so the people I know that come from sports are always the best comics because you're never focusing on, you know, you don't get points for the nine free throws you made. It's like you didn't fucking make 10. In and that there's game. always someone better than you. Always. Like when in sports, it's it's, it's a great hum, hum, humbling mm -hmm. experience because I, I didn't get picked for teams, mm. and that and then there was no. I kind of really celebrate the fact that I didn't get picked for teams. At mm. times. It like trained you for freshman year baseball. I didn't get. I didn't make. They didn't have JV that year, and I didn't make the varsity team, and I was devastated. Mm. And then I didn't make JV basketball. Devastated. Ooh. And then I ran track and I swam. And I was like, but I wasn't the kid that was like, I, I, I wasn't raised to just fail and then blame politics for it. Sure, or blame, sure. Like, but that's radical accountability. Track and swimming, you can't fucking blame anybody. And that's very much oh, like comedy. And my, you're like singular. My dad's like, buddy, you didn't make that team. You can you you can run track and you can. But you swim. can't say, oh, the point guard didn't pass it to me. I didn't score. Like it's yeah. all on you, the right. pressure, the glory and the heartbreak and also sports taught me practice should always be harder than the game we dread practice and oh. we look forward to the game as a fucking day off right the same with like shows right. you know it's like oh no performing the theater show, this is a just flying but it's the nights at the comedy store the working it all out that's when it should feel like work it does you know so that it's effortless when yeah you well i, I just show. said to someone i was talking to a someone getting ready for a special i have such a sports mentality mm. where i said I, I I love the preparation so much. Like I love the when because you can in sports you could be like if I if I take batting practice every day at my lunch, then I'm doing more than the other guy. I love this shit so much. So I don't know what athlete it was. Kobe I think Bryant. It could have been it could it was could have been Kobe and it could have been Tom Brady. And they were talking about how every time there's a 15 minute break. I will practice for five of those minutes, just like my form or whatever. So 365 days a year times five. Mm. I already have like 10 days more practice. That's more amazing. people need more need more people. Sports is so brilliant. More yeah. people need to hear Kobe's theory about getting up at early and working out early or not going out mm. in clubs. Like during the, it was there was a great documentary on the it's 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 on Netflix. It's about the Olympic team and Kobe's work ethic. And I I was talking to a comic mm. about their special. They're getting ready to shoot a special in December. And I said, "How many times are you running it?" And they were like, "Well, I've these dates." And I said, "Well, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You haven't done the math on this because mm. this is how I did when I did Razzle Dazzle. I said, I I don't know why. Maybe because I it maybe it's this inferiority complex that I have in my head. But I went." So I remember I took Jesse Itzler makes a calendar that's really big. It's called like a wall. It's like the size of a wall. And I said, all right, I have 90 days until I shoot my special. I said to myself, if I do stand up 180 times in 90 days, that's twice a day. If I said to myself I did stand up twice a day, mm. every day before I did the special, I'd be in good shapes. Let's go 200 times. I got to do 200 sets before Ooh. I do this spot. And so what I did is I I 
and then I mapped it out. I went, uh, okay, I'm going to write down all this, all this roads shows we know we have on the road. Great. Mm. And I wrote them all out. And then I went, okay, that means fuck on Mondays. I got to go to the improv on Tuesdays. I got to go yeah. to the store. I got to hit every room in the store and I got to go over to the improvs. And I just started. And then I was like, Towards the end, I was like, I need to go to Madison, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and do fucking four shows in Madison to make get to this two hundred. But and I said that to the other comic, and the other comic, I don't think they totally got it. I was like, no, but that's the thing mm -hmm. that if you get, if you prepare, if you if you practice, mm. it's then all of a sudden all the other stuff. And the fact that you're already, I didn't read any books about having kids. I didn't read any. I like just was like. Leanne will do all the homework. Mm -hmm. I, I got a good lab partner. She'll read the books. I did read the but books. But that's why you're going to be a great fucking parent. It's because it, you didn't you didn't like. I remember hearing Tom talk about uh, when about me and Leanne, and he I don't know I'm I don't know who he was talking to, but he was saying that him and Christina decided they didn't want to be poor and have kids. Mm. And he goes, "We watched Bert and Leanne have kids poor, and we both of us were like, fuck, like mm. they're just figuring it out." And he's like, "We wanted to have money when we had kids." So we waited until we had money. And they did. Mm, they did. Mm -hmm. Remember, we going to their house at, when they had Julian and going up to their thing and being like, they had all the good shit. Yeah. And I remember being like, Leanne and I didn't, we got the good shit, but towards the end, not even, like, even like their their diaper genie was badass. When they were little. She, I know, yeah. she sent me, Christina sent me some really good stuff, a diaper warmer and a scale. She said, oh, we get had a to scale. breathe on ours. <laughs> breathe on the diapers. We go. <laughs> I'd have to. I'd wear it. I'd wear it for a little bit. Walk around the house and then put it on. Her. Right. I guess for me, I'm like, you know what? I'm good at course correcting. I'm good at apologizing and knowing when I've made a mistake and admitting when I've made a mistake. Um, and I'm good at preparing and then throwing it all out the window and then going, you know what? I'm going to trust my instincts on this one. Like yeah. knowing when to and eyebrows. And I'm, I, you have great eyebrows. Do you know you about eyebrows. wait? Do you know about this? Do you know that when I made the sex robot for my fourth special, I went down to the sex robot factory and they said, you know, I was like, how do people request what they want? And they go, oh, they are very specific about like like celebrity mouth most requested Mila Kunis, eyes most requested Olivia Wilde, eyebrows most requested Whitney Cummings. No way! No. Hey. Swear to God, superior eyebrows. Swear to God, that's amazing. I was like, not personality. Isn't that weird? Because they're also asymmetrical too. Because I do them myself, and I and they're they're not, but I do fill them in. They look great. They do. That's, Thank I you. can't believe out of all the uh, of it all, all the uh, technologies they have eye t eyebrow tattooing now. But what I can't believe they don't do eyebrow transplants. Yo, they do. I have a friend who took two strips out of the back of her scalp and put made them eyebrows, and they grow like real hair, and she has to cut them. Oh my god. Yep. Uh, eyebrow transplant comes uh, from the back of your head. Your scalp. My eyebrows what are, are thinning you out. I might get you can do it, and it just they take it from here, put it here, but it grows like head on your hair. So you're probably fine. <laughs> Yeah, it, my, my yeah. eyebrows are pretty aggressive these days. Yeah, um, he's got some long, like, old man looking But the stuff tattooing, happening. I think I might do to fill in some little spots. No, don't need to. I know. Remember tattoo makeup? Yep. A lot of my mom's friends had tattoo, like, lip, lip liner, liner and stuff. Yes. So fucking crazy. It's still around. I want to get to. Oh, did you ever get a tattoo? Uh -uh. No. Come on. We were talking about getting one. I know. Remember you were going to get the bird or? We were talking about getting one. I don't know. It's I'm starting to feel family like. Family crest? Do you guys have a family crest? No. This is important. You guys can make your own family crest. What would be in it? It's it so, in so a my baby wall. Handyman guy makes them and he made a little one for me. It would be what? Like a baby a peach, walrus. Baby walrus. A peach. Maybe a peach. Yeah. Georgia peach. Florida something. Probably. Well, I got to shoot testosterone tonight. HGH? A needle. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, no, just testosterone. Like what? Peptides, you know, are being outlawed. Are no, they? Or fucking come. load up. Yeah. Why are they being outlawed? Because our country wants us to stay sick. I don't know. And so is NMN. You know, NAD, NMN, resveratrol, all the stuff that's like the, you know, and pharma is suing all of the supplement companies so that they can then have the Oh, patent. because we're taking out of their pockets. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. a really skeptical of big pharma it's, these days. Not that I'm not only be. one. Yeah, I'm, but like I, I'm starting to not believe in sleep apnea. Like I'm starting to think that everyone's there. Now that I know that there's a mm -hmm. rub that everyone that the, i didn't i watched that documentary about uh mm. about uh opi opioids yeah and how they were just like they were like yo doctors mm. subs prescribe these and then we'll give you a, you get a kickback for yeah everything. disgusting that, that you is. go like oh my yeah. god they really didn't give a fuck 
Yeah. And then I realize, so wait, just out of curiosity, how many kickbacks do you get for sleep apnea? Yep. For referring oh, wow. a patient for sleep apnea? Because I don't know one man that doesn't have sleep apnea. Wow. Every man has it. And and I, the machine doesn't work for me. And I sleep fine now that I've lost weight. But I, I wanted like so much. And like, I, and, and then I start it's, thinking like fucking cholesterol medicine. Like what things yeah. are just kind of like, I don't know. Birth control, they prescribed me birth control for migraines and for acne. And I was on Accutane when I was. Um, That's an intense drug. Twice, super intense. I had yeah. a friend tell me I needed to get on Viagra for uh, for my prostate. Mm -mm. Don't what? don't take mm -hmm. pharma advice from friends. You do not need Viagra. I don't. But what's the last thing that would be on your crest? Uh, yeah, it's a cool thing. And you guys could make one and um, have someone paint it. That's cool. That's yeah, and have cool like a little idea. saying you could yeah. put like in Latin of what your sort of motto is. It's like mm. grace, integrity, oh. something. Oh, no, fuck grace. <laughs> grace, integrity. I don't know. Grace, <laughs> integrity. Grace and gratitude. Yeah. Oh, like you can have like your own grace family thing. Georgia peach, a Florida gator. Oh, no. Be a, 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 be a, a seminal. Okay. Like an Indian chief. What would, what would Isla have? God. Uh, Doesn't she like pillow. birds? Sparrows? No. Sleeping. <laughs> right. A, a picture, one, of, a, one of the pictures of Isla's shit. An animal. <laughs> she a loves camel? animals. An animal. Oh, an animal. She loves animals. There would be a cat. You could do fucking... a little sickle. You could do a little. Like like a, within it, somewhere smaller. Yeah. I think it's a cool thing to do. Maybe we have, should do a crest. Have you done your wills yet? Oh, yeah. 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 That's uh, fun. Farewell. She said, uh, she, she said if something goes wrong with her, just pull the plug. Yeah, I don't want to be kept on life support indefinitely. No way. Who are you leaving everything to? Uh, our, Island, our Georgia. Kids. Island just but then, that. but then do they do a thing? What if you all die together? Who yeah. does it? Uh, like our they go through every iteration, nephew, right? Oof. Niece and nephew. I want to leave everything to my exes. This is a joke. <laughs> That's I funny. want an ex Ooh. to just be like, wait, when did you know he's left? Wait, what? What? <laughs> Not anymore. Cool. I want, there's a couple like joke things I want to leave. Like my favorite dude at Trader Joe's, this guy, I just want to leave him like 50 grand. That's <laughs> like, awesome. Like there's like some things where I'm like, there are some people that I just feel like it would be funny. Did you do any prank stuff in your will? No. No, no but I did want to do like a scavenger hunt for my will. That's funny. Or do like a <laughs> reading. <laughs> like, like they do That's funny. uh you've all been called here and there are people <laughs> thinking they're getting money and then they don't and they're like, <laughs> this is the emergency I've point of contact but they're not in it at all i've never right? known one person to do that that's I, really I funny to read a will out loud i've never had a i've never been to a do you put your funeral room. wishes oh, on have. there dude no one does funerals anymore i have I so many people true. die and then they just do a celebration of life i go no 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 oh no. interesting i want old school funeral. you want a dirge i want an old school funeral right. in yeah. suits i want to carry the casket yep i want an open casket mm. i like i was trying to think the other day of whose funerals i'd go to like like who would i fly like who would i cancel the show for and go mm, to interesting that's interesting yeah i was thinking about that the other day because i didn't go to ralphie's a lot i don't of think people. ralphie had a funeral I don't. Remember I didn't know Ralphie. Ralphie. I, I didn't remember. know Ralphie. Oh, for real. But I'm a fan. I just sent. I send his open water bit about open water shark, um, squid, uh, barracuda. Like I send that to people a lot. He he had. He was a such sweet an ability. Fella. He had such an ability of like tagging jokes. And he also just had the. Is it true that he broke all of his bones in a accident? When he was a kid, yeah. And he was. Um, I mean, he's dead, so it doesn't matter. But he was also molested at a young age. So he had a lot of he had a lot of real demons, like real demons. Mm -hmm. And a lot uh, of times, getting that heavy is a protection against yeah, molest, totally. being molested. Mm -hmm. It's a big yeah. yeah. And so, but he was so sweet, fucking sweet. God yeah. damn, so in in the way that he would surf the audience, the way that he that his use of yeah. silence was, was amazing he, to watch. But his but he was so good at tagging a joke so many times until it it couldn't be tagged anymore. It was like a laugh of like. It was almost like a flutter punch of laughs. Mm. Like I remember he had this joke about, I wish I could find the joke because it was that good about um, guys not, girls not wanting big dicks. Trust me, ladies, you don't want a big dick. Leaving your pussy looking like a horse reaching for a sugar cube. You don't want to, you don't want your, you want a medium dick. You want medium dicks, good. You don't want no big dick leaving you. And he would just tag it so many different ways. Like he'd written nine tags and they were all so good uh, but it was such like a hammer 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 
and and and, and I remember I've had to follow him on a cruise on Cowhead's cruise, and I I remember I I went before him on the first show, and then I he said I'll go second on the f- next show, and I went oh I'll go I'll close it, and he was like oh I don't think you want to do that, Burke Kreischer, <laughs> and I was like I was like no Ralphie I don't want you to have to close every show I'll close it I go even if I eat a dick I'll close it, and he goes you ain't gonna eat a dick but it's gonna be an uphill walk, <laughs> and I was like I was like I'll be fine and. He killed so hard. I was like, I don't know how I can get them to forget about him and think Mm -hmm. about something else. He was so fucking good. I love he would also do these little tags that like if you missed it, you missed it. Like he was talking about how like black people would watch open. He saw open water in a theater with black people and just doing the running commentary of like, why? Why are these white people in the ocean? Ocean. Oh, chin. And like he would kind (laughs) of just, you know what I mean? Oh, he said Man. when they did when they came out with Fat Bastard, he was on stage and uh, in Austin Powers. He goes, "Oh, that's funny to you guys. Okay, you don't <laughs> find that offensive? I find it offensive. How come we can't do Black Bastard, huh? Why don't they have a black guy up there? I'm talking dark, so dark. You throw salt in his face, he looks like deep space. Why can't we do? Why can't we do Mexican ass bastard? You know the Mexican guys with the baby gold teeth. And then he grabbed Mike. How you gonna be a grown man with baby gold teeth? <laughs> I mean, just like so." fucking rapid fire so specific and so like god didn't he have a wife named april may june or did i make that up yeah no he had two he had a son named uh named august and he had a daughter named a uh april i think i think it was i think it was wife's name was lana wife's name was lana i ran into his son roller skating one day random at a roller rink with the his roller kids. roller rink. I just ran into August. It was George's birthday. I mean, George's I was bir- birthday party. I was birthday, and he was, yeah. he was wearing his dad's shirt. He like, died of di- diabetes or heart attack? I think it was Where's heart the tr- failure. Yeah. He was, he was, he, I don't know. I, it's irresponsible for me to say, but I, but of course I'll say it because it's a podcast. <laughs> but I think he was partying pretty hard towards the end of his mm. life. I think he was, I think he was not happy, and he was, and I don't, I don't think it was an overdose, but I think he was just taking attacks on himself. Yeah. And, you know, what's funny is I never thought he was lying. So, like, I'd ask him, how's your blood pressure? And he goes, oh, playa, doctor says I'm perfect health. And then you were like, yeah. And then I'll remember the next week he almost died on a cruise. Jesus. And I was like, Ralphie? He was like, ah, it's a fluke, man. These uh-huh. colds get up on you. Pneumonia's a motherfucker, Bert Kreischer, especially if you don't move around like me. On the last cruise I was on with him, he he that was the time I couldn't follow him. And he, he didn't leave his <laughs> he didn't leave his room for the whole cruise except Ugh. for to do the show. And <laughs> on a cruise, you know, you tip your 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 steward and they 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 wait on your room. <laughs> and I said to a steward, <laughs> Have you seen the big guy? And he goes, oh, Mr. Ralph, no get out of bed today. Oh. And I said, really? And he goes, he no get out of bed all week. Come on. And then he opened the door. And he goes, Mr. Ralph? And Ralph, he goes, Raphael, shut the fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ralph, we have visitor. Like, this guy was just in and out of Ralphie's room the so whole time. he wouldn't time. even get up and walk around. No. He was pretty big at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Your heart just can't handle all that weight. I think I think that's how most people who are morbidly like four, six hundred yeah, pounds. Yeah, your heart. We were heart hoping failure, that would happen yeah. for you on the cruise that you'd be so big and pregnant <laughs> that we'd go, Miss <laughs> Whitney, no come out of her room today. No come out. I know I'm so bummed you're not going to be there. I'm, I'm really bummed. So bummed, I'm, but been really fun. But priorities, really priorities. I am so. I was, and I mean, I think about what what Ralphie, whatever you just said about going hard and like. You know, I have to own like there was, you know, it was maybe like right during the pandemic, of course. But like after I found myself, you know, taking a Lunesta to go to sleep, you know, and then next morning I'm like, I've got this 10 milligram Adderall. I I was technically prescribed time release Adderall to sleep because that's OCD. You actually it doesn't amp you up. It actually calms you down. I'm like, I'm kind of tired. I just like take this. And I'm like, ah, God, I'm kind of stressed. Let me just smoke. Like I, I felt. I got a little taste of that Mm whack-a-mole of the you're going too hard and you're like, no, I'll just take this to take this. And then the, well, yeah, no, but I, I'm going to just have some NyQuil. I already smoked weed and I had a little bit of it, but like, I just, I have a sniffle, so I just need to take the NyQuil. And you just kind of, 
the stories your brain tells you in order to go like, well, I only have one more week of touring. So let me just take two Lunesta mm. and then I'll get double the sleep. Like just, I got a little taste of that. Yeah. Um, I've been there. I've been there a lot. I was just there. Dr. Drew made me realize that mushrooms, if you're already a compassionate person, it throws you into overdrive. Like I had scheduled a call with a maritime lawyer to try to find out where the kids on the Scientology boats were. Oh my God. Because I was like, I gotta, we gotta find it. Like, and then the Saudis just put money into Disney. We got, we got to make. There's, I wonder how many mentally ill people are actually fucking being held back by our society. When I look back at it, I was like, in my both my parents had died. I had all this bandwidth freed up, and I'm like, we got to clean up the water in West Virginia. What, why haven't we done this yet? I'm Dude. texting my friends. I'm like, let's post about it. Let's all go down there. Let me raise some money. It was all stuff that needs to be done. Right. It was yeah. just manic to be like everyone. Doctor Drew said a manic episode is when you think people aren't listening to you. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like, all day, every day, being a Fuck, female you mean comedian. A manic? I know. I didn't realize how out of control my life got. And so I was 275 pounds and I was drinking from the second we woke up until until whenever I passed out. Mm. And I mean, at the very end, and people would say they were worried about me, but I got so angry at that. Mm. I remember it was, I, like, I remember R Rogan saying something and Tom saying something. On air? Yeah, probably, I'm sure. And then I remember seeing Dr. Drew say something on air about me. And then people would like, and then, like, I remember it just, it, and you'd hear it and you'd be like. Because then I'm kind of like, are you basing this on actually hanging out with me? Or you, you don't just, hang out with me. That's the other thing. That was during the pandemic when everyone was saying that I'd lost my mind. I'm like, but you haven't seen me and you're, someone else said this. And now it's just like gossip train. Yeah. And now it's like, it's it's good to be worried about that. And, and I remember one dude reaching out to me. And, and also stop pretending you're worried. You haven't reached out direct. Like you haven't. Yeah. You know, anyway. It took me. Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I got on a scale and I was like. And I was too scared to look at the number, so I switched it to kilograms. Mm. And then I was like, oh, this is bad if I'm not not willing to look at how big I am. Mm. I, I didn't like the way people were looking at me. Like, And I was like, I'm not out of control because I can be in control anytime I want, but I'm not showing you that. Yeah, I'm just, You're seeing, you're not seeing me work out. You're not seeing me uh, fucking get shit done. You're just seeing my weight balloon that is a clear representation to someone's health. I will get my health in order and I will I will be in control of all of this. I'm not going to let this narrative get in front of yeah. all the hard work I'm doing. Like That's I have, you know, all these great things going on in my life. But all you're seeing is a guy get fat. I remember watching that happen to other people and they'd be doing great things. Be like, woof, they're not like F Farley. But there, yeah. There's videos of Farley where you're like, Jesus, he's gotten mm -hmm. big. And you're like, oh, that's what happens. Mm. But uh but you're not a stimulants guy, really. You know what I mean? No, That's I'm, really where I'm that shit beer. hits the fan. I'm beer vodka. But Wine. it's also, you know. Wine. It's also. I start drinking this week. You start, you're um, back to, back? Um, well, we'll see. Oh, yeah, Sober October is over. Yeah, we'll see. You slimmed down fast, though. Uh, not as fast as I, w I used oh, to. Oh, really? I used to stop drinking and lose all my weight. And then now I have, like, it's been, I, it, I was like, I'll lose 30 pounds easy. And it took. I've been working out for like 80 days. It's, mm. and uh, Do you find that the weed makes you hungrier or no, speeds up all. your metabolism? No, it, it makes me very grateful. Like it, it, yeah, I am, a, I'm forced to, I don't know, for whatever reason, it makes me very <laughs> present. And I, nice. I enjoy at the end of the night taking like a hit on a vape pen <laughs> and smoking a cigar and just, yeah. and then just relaxing and then getting in bed and listening to a podcast about <laughs> Florida. <laughs> and, and going to sleep I, it's i don't know i the only reason i i mean you know i'm never gonna not drink but like i want to get i don't want to lose where i am right now because i'm so happy mm -hmm. like i'm so happy but i want alcohol like today they start we started talking about the cruise we're talking about going to dinner the first night talking about our first celebration drink and all these things and i got really excited to start drinking and i was like fuck i can't wait to start drinking and Pete said to me, I haven't heard you talk like that in a very long time. You know what's interesting about you and the drinking thing, though, which is like having been around so many like hardcore alcoholics, you're not like, I got to have my this drink at this time. And this you're kind of like, oh, what should I have tonight? Yeah. Like, it's not this is my thing. And if I don't have this it's thing celebratory. For yeah. Him. You're like you're like, I'll have a martini and, I, you know, I'll have a makers like uh -huh. it's like about 
just letting loose. It's not a you're not a slave to that one thing at the same no, time it's every about, night. It's about having a good time. I want to have a good time. And sometimes, and I will say this, it's amazing how much life, how hard it is to have a good time without alcohol in so many situations, whether it's a dinner party at someone's house mm -hmm. or a tailgate mm -hmm. or like there's so many times, even a concert at times, like, I mean, I, 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 enjoy, I can enjoy a concert sober. Oddly enough, I can enjoy a concert sober, but it's like so many times like a, a drink just. Also being famous is weird, man. I like. Every now and then you're out and you're just like having a drink just makes you be like, yeah, I'm not doing photos tonight, man. And like, I just probably couldn't have said that if I had if I wasn't even just holding a drink. You know what I mean? I've snapped at two fans. I've never snapped at anyone. I've never been gracious about not gracious about pictures, but two people and they were just rude. They were rude. Mm. But normally that does not register with me. Mm -hmm. I accommodate and I go and uh, one guy said. What are you, somebody or something? Uh, uh, I, that's and it. I, and, and, and then. I, oh, you know, I don't have a TV. Okay. Yeah. Or, or guys come up to me on the back. Like, I, I don't know who you are, but my girlfriend loves you. So could I get a picture? And I'm like, no, actually. Yeah. I don't know who you are. Okay. I don't know who you are, but can I get a picture? That, uh, that wasn't the one. And then another lady goes, why does everyone care about you? Whoa. And I was, well, normally that those would be. Those would be, and that woman wasn't a fan, but that, but those would be things that just brush off, mm. and I'd and I'd take very lightly. But both of them, right? One guy was, it was just but you was, were out. Like this is my night out. I'm not. No, yeah. One was, one was, I was eating. It's it's been crazy. It's been <sighs> nuts lately. I bet there's like no. It what's really interesting to me is people will say, "I want a picture." They won't say, hey, can I get a picture? Do you okay. mind if we take a picture? They just go, hey, I, hey man, I want a picture. Like, it, like you're just supposed to step up and take a picture with them. It's really mm. rude. It's gotten, it's gotten. Aggressive. It actually has gotten way worse. Like, we had an incident going into a football game the other night, that, the other day, that was like absolute unbridled chaos. It was. Because then it was, it's also like, I mean, I actually try to make announcements on my podcast every now and then where I'm like, just FYI, I'm going to. If you guys see me, just have your phone ready. Right. Just walk up, have it ready. No, I'm going to say yes, but don't make me go yes. And then you go, okay, great. Um, Let me get my, eh, and then all of a sudden no one knows how to use their phone. And then all yeah. of a sudden it's on the video. Oh, I don't know my password. Just have it ready. If you're before you even come up, the answer is yes, but just be prepared. Don't turn this into like a it was, saga. It was aggressive at that football game that it was like, it got to a place where I was like, oh, I, get, I, mean, I really sincerely don't think I can ever go to a football game like this. Any, for a while because it was um, that's why so people have security that's why like you know when it's like they have they get to be the bearers of bad news yeah it's like sorry I, I would love to but i can't i would love to but i can't because if i did that's all i do yeah and, and but uh but yeah if not drinking i notice it uh, i noticed that i noticed the rudeness a little quicker i Ooh, noticed yep, that yep i i'm picking up on like i'm a little bit more of a like, I don't mind going to bed now. Like, I never, I was always, my first takeaway when I stopped drinking for as long as I have was I was blown away by how often people wanted to go to bed. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, so everyone just, really everyone so wants you to go have, to bed. So you have, do you have the, I have a friend that has this, uh, who's like, we're, we're staying up. Uh -huh. It's yeah. almost like sleepover party. Like, yeah. no, 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 we're not going to bed. Every yeah. We're not night, going to bed. Every I call it New Year's Eve syndrome. Night. That's so wild. Every, Every night is New Year's Eve. And also, night. is it partly because as having the circadian rhythm you have of, you probably don't fall asleep till 3 a.m. anyway because of doing stand-up for so long? Yeah, and and I need, and well, Not and I think. Partly, I'm, though, because at home he goes to bed. Yeah, but but Regular when you're time. out, you're like, why are we, we're not done. Ooh, I would never let anyone go to bed. I, someone told me one time that, the comedians that I would tour with would take turns with me. I, they were, I don't think they would like, like who's going to say they would discuss in they the beginning discuss, of the week. You like, take Thursday out. I got Friday. You got Saturday so that they could go to bed. Cause I would keep them up. What's your, what's your optimal sleep amount of time hours? You uh, right now, like six hours, seven hours. And I'm, I'm at 90%. Mm. I'm sleeping pretty amazingly, mm. but on the road I'd sleep. I'd sleep just fine. But I didn't realize I just wanted everyone to stay up and I wanted everyone to wake up. I wanted everyone to have lunch together. I wanted yeah. To, I'm like, I want everyone together. And, and alcohol for me, I think, is a stimulant yep, yep, where it's it true. Make, gives me energy. 
And, and it winds most people down. Oh, not me. I, I. Who else does it keep? Like Shane seems like he's able to go pretty hard with Shane it. Shane Gillis goes pretty he fucking hard. He can stay hard. up with it. Like if there's like, if you're going to, he is. Beast. He is the, he is the next big drinking comic, in my opinion. <laughs> like he, he, he makes me look like, he makes me look like I don't drink. Philly strong, dude. He fucking puts them. Someone said to him one time, how many drink beers can you drink? And he was like, 18. Oh my 24. god! Twenty four. Mm-hmm. Like he 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 drinks Bud Lights like they're yes. water. Yes, that's that is correct. Uh, they are kind of water. Yeah, he needs to switch over to vodka. No. Nah. Yeah. He doesn't seem the vodka type. There is a um, sort of like ancestry thing that's kind of fascinating of like herding. Like, do you come oh, from that's herding? What, I went to ancestry dot com. It's <laughs> shut up, shut up. Such a door. Yeah, that's called farmers only. Right? <laughs> they actually do. When have you that. said Gavin, when you said Gavin uh Newsom, I uh, thought it was Gavin McGinnis. Who's that? The guy that started the Proud Boys. And you're like, <laughs> Gavin McGinnis is telling us not to use our cars. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. He was usually a little more conservative than that. That made me think of yeah. Gavin Rossdale, the singer of Bush. Gavin who, Rossdale's beautiful. I sat behind on a plane to England and he Googled himself the whole time. Really? Shut up. Unnecessary thing to admit, but here we are. Uh him and Tom Segura. <laughs> Buddies? <laughs> no, no. Googles himself. Well, he was like on his Twitter looking at his Twitter at replies. And because oh, someone had uh, suggested to set us up or something, and I was like, "No, I'm Team he's Gun." Gorgeous, gorgeous. He's gorgeous. I don't know. He's not my type. This, to the, I don't like yeah. skinny lips. Uh, I don't. I don't he's think got he's got that skinny gorgeous. lips. Mm-hmm. He's got great, very hair. skinny lips. He's got great hair. It's been a while since it's been a while since he's had a hit. Yeah. It's yeah. Been a minute. Yeah. Thirty years. Gavin, if you're listening to this, I just want Glycerine. you to know that I'm a fucking. Oh, <laughs> fuck, breathing. Who's breathe like the hottest? Out, oh, well, that breathe is hot. In, Breathe out, breathe in. That's animal or something. Uh, Thread to a wheel. Mach- yeah. <laughs> machine yeah. head. That's yeah, better than the rest. Head. Yeah. Better than the rest. Who's like the hottest guy? Like stud. Like Jason Momoa? Yeah. Yeah. Have to be. He's pretty stud. Yeah, I, hear he I feel like guys parties. and girls have different I hear he parties. Uh, mine is are. Thor all day. Uh, Hemsworth? All day long. I don't like blonde men. Oh, I was all about <laughs> blonde men. I love it's blonde men. Little, I don't know. I'm like they feel like I feel like they need a lot of sunscreen or something. Oh no, he's you know, like perfect. can you put some sunscreen on my back? Like, like he's here. perfect. He's only just a little taller than you. Oh really? Yeah. Is he taller than me? Mm-hmm. He is. We have a lot of. Oh, I, I thought he was physique. like seven feet tall. He's really tall. Yeah. Momoa. Yeah, he. I feel like he used to live in Topanga, and he was actually when I got proposed to. So bots make a lot of news stories. So when he got divorced from Lisa Bonet, I did host this like fundraiser where I had my hair in these like braids and curls and the bots thought I was Lisa Bonet. So there was a lot of news articles where my face, which is the algorithm just got it wrong, you know, and put me with him. But I also think it's because when I got proposed to once, it was right across the street from his house and there was a photographer that was hidden in the bushes in order to take photos of my oh. proposal. And Jason Momoa was like going for a run and thought it was paparazzi and was like, what the fuck are you doing here, man? So the wedding photographer was like, like missed the proposal oh, because no. he thought Jason Momoa was going to kick his ass. So we had to restage the spontaneous proposal video. I used to think those would be so cool to be in a, in a gossip that I had no emotional attachment to. <laughs> I still like, Oh, I got, I got, they thought I had a heart attack TMZ. And they were like, they called me. They called Leanne, and I was and like, and I was like, what? No. Who would would someone? But how does that even happen? Do you when you come out of? Oh, I guess you if you don't. Would you ever fly Delta? There's always TMZ outside Delta. I've seen them. I I, I think I know the guy. Yeah. I think he's like. A I know. He's like, are you a comic? <laughs> it's yeah. always like, what are you doing, man? He's like, I'm there. I got spots later tonight. I'll see you. Yeah. Like, see the haha. Ha. Like what? Yeah. He's like, real quick. What do you think about Chappelle and the trans stuff? I'm yeah. Like, like, I love Chappelle. He's like, ah, okay, all right, take fair care. enough. Oh, uh, yeah, he's like, I, I'm looking for someone that hates you. But, you know. Yeah, like, I don't really know. Like, I'm not your guy. Yeah, you, you did. Yeah. No. All right, I've got a pee. I all got right. a pee, too. I got a vape pen that's got a brand new vape pen that's got my name written all over it. Does Do you it? prefer a vape over just smoking a joint? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I'm gonna, maybe I'll do both tonight. I've got a great cigar that I'm ready for. Ooh, I feel like once I have the kid, I'm going to get in. I want to like get into cigars. Oh, I have a. Uh, because you don't actually get them in your lungs, no, do you? No, 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 no. You're just in, in your mouth. And then. Did you ever I've, chew? 
Oh, yes. Really? Fucking miss Is that, that's like a high, thing. right? It's the yeah. best. That's the best in the world. That's the best thing you'll ever do. Uh, I'm going to do, I got a steak. I got oh. a cigar. I have a vape pen. I have an LMNT. And I might get in the hot tub. Mm. And I, then that's my night. Living the dream. Sauna, you doing that sauna out there? The island, I do the sauna. Nice. She said to me the other day, we should enter a suicide pact. And I was what? like, wait, what? <laughs> She goes, never mind, never mind. I go, wait, do you know what suicide pact is? <laughs> no, by the way, my favorite part of it is never mind. That, never mind. <laughs> I thought never that was going to kill. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. I was like, wait, you want to do a suicide so I'm just saying, like, if you do it, I'll do it. And I was like, maybe no, wait. Maybe turn the us, heat down in the song. None right? of us are killing ourselves. She goes, I'm, I'm never going to kill myself, but never mind. And then she started whittling it down. You know, if mom died, we're fucked. And I was like, yeah. Oh, so like if mom dies, we all just she goes, drink if, poison. If you died, George is fucked. Mom would be fine. I'll be fine. If I died, you're fucked. Mom's fucked. George is fucked. And then she was like, I go, what if George died? She goes, oh, you're really fucked. I was like, really? And she goes, oh, we're not seeing you again for a while. That's the one thing I got to be honest. Like, having kids, I remember always going like, let me wait. Because just the idea of loving something that much is just so terrifying. It's, it's pretty overwhelming. It's so stupid. It's not stupid. The stakes it are sucks. so high. It it's sucks. amazing. But, you know, so bad. it is. Because he's going to break his... <laughs> The hand he's oh, gonna it's hurt it's not that it's not that it's not that it's him going to school his very first day oh god and you going i hope he makes a friend i hope i have a his last name will be cummings he's gonna get his ass kicked he's gonna be... i remember georgia i to this day i i i bring this up georgia was going to a brand new school and she second grade and she, we had a new house, new school. We're all riding our bikes to school. And she calls me into her bedroom. And I go, what's up? She goes, what do you think? And she puts on a fedora. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, don't fucking do it. Like, don't stand out. Don't be different. Just fit in, in my mm. head. And I go, look great. And she goes, I knew you'd say that. She goes, I'm wearing it. And I was like, oh, okay. And we dropped her off at school. And she had the fedora on and she looked at me. She went into class. No one was wearing a goddamn fedora. No, no. And I was like, I was like, all right, good luck. And I went home and I was so mad at Leanne that she made me have kids. I was like, <laughs> I I wasn't asking for this vulnerability. I never wanted it. And now I have it. And now all I'm gonna do is spend the whole day thinking about this girl in a fedora. And everyone's like, yo, where where's the fucking what's up with the fedora? Yeah. And at the end of school, she came out and, she, and I was and she didn't have it on. Mm. And I was like, wait, where's the fedora? And she goes, Dad, it was a hit. Everyone <gasps> took tor turns wearing it. I was the most popular girl in, in class. And I was like, oh. And today, to this day, even when she went to college, she goes, Dad, I'm the girl in the fedora. I'll be fine. Come on. And you're like, motherfucker. Come on. She's pretty special. Oh, but man. Those, but those moments of, of, of. They're I, I, like I did that. it in my special, Vila. Who I mean, it make it fucks me up. I honestly, if there's a reason to drink, it's these thoughts mm. of Isla looking at her name on the list mm. for school, and she looks at me. She goes, "Am I in the stupid class?" And me going, "Oh fuck, I think she's in the stupid class." Mm. And then I was like, "No, no." She was like, "Wait," and then we go to her line, and she sees the Asian kid licking his hand and smelling it. <laughs> she's like. Dad, I think I'm in the stupid class, and I'm like, no, no. There's a lot of bright kids, and then one, and then, and then, but that, and then Leanne coming and going. No, you're not in the stupid class. Lily's in your class. Is Lily in the stupid class? No. And I was like, right. She's like, all your friends are here. Ali, you're fine. Leanne dealt with a great. I would just go like, oh god. And then it turns out she was in the stupid class, but. But no, she, she was not. Or whatever. There was no such thing as a stupid class. I was in the gold group. Oh, that's right. You said there's no the such group. thing mm -hmm. as a stupid class. Yeah, gold group. We were gold group, and there was red, blue group, and blue group, and slow reading was gold group. They were like, you're the gold group. Oh, so you're we ability thought we grouped. were the smart ones. Yeah. yeah. You were ability group. I just feel like I've spent my whole life trying to avoid getting my heart broken, and it's just, like, going to happen now. Oh. Well, the interesting thing about having a kid, I think, now that one is kind of is in college, mm. and one is almost in college, uh, the feeling that happened for me when Georgia first left, I was cool. It's cool for a while. 
as Mother's Day started approaching, mm. I started falling apart, like completely falling apart going, no, 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 hold on. This day is mine because of Georgia. And Georgia is gone. Uh, and now I'll never have uh, another complete Mother's Day because I don't have both my kids and this is my future. Mother's Day is meaningless now. This now I get and then I started going. Car. Exactly. Well, you know, you gotta pivot. <laughs> but my brain kept going. I, okay, I was an only child who was lonely her whole life, mm. who grew up to get married, to have this brood of people so I would not be lonely, mm. and they're leaving. Mm. Everybody fucking leaves. So, awesome. This is so great for me, and Mother's Day's going to suck. And I just started falling apart, realizing I'd spent 18 years really building and crafting and putting everything I had into these kids and our family, our unit yeah. of four, and the natural progression, the thing that's supposed to happen is that they're supposed to leave. Yep, yep. That's what you want. And I was like, what a fucking crock of shit yep. that I worked for 18 years to at the end of the 18 years go, bye bye. I guess I'll just be here by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it was awful. He's that that was probably my least favorite moment of parenting. But luckily, I sent Ever. Georgia home, and we got a viral video, and we sold tickets from it. Yes, Boom. he surprised and It seems like college is going to be over soon. So, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, talk to Isla. <laughs> to say, Isla goes, you know, what did she say yesterday? It. She goes, I'll give it a semester if I like it. I'll stay. If I don't, literally, I'll move to New York. I went. Do you for think the... you're moving to fucking New York? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just. I mean, will college even be a thing in ten years? Who even knows? Who knows? Who knows? But that's the hardest part of parenting to me: is transitioning into them being an adult not that i want them to stay in my house mm. you want them to be out yep. that's what you want yep, that's the goal but it is like ugh, what a it's crock of shit it's like you know that's why we have marijuana i don't have to think about any of these yeah, thoughts nice. tonight i'm, gonna, I'm be... gonna get back on it after i have this kiddo if the breastfeeding doesn't take we're back What's great Are is you that when you, when you I'll need... try, but like, you know, I see so many of my friends like, <gasps> trying to breastfeed. It's like, it's so much worse to be stressed out than to just do the formula. But why are they stressing out? It's really not that hard. I'm telling you, because you've had out dogs. stressing out is what's going to stop the. No, yeah, because, because you've had dogs. I think you're going to do better and off I've than you think. breastfed them. I've Of looked, course you But have. I also have um, fake boobs, so. Well, here, let me try. Does, does that matter? <laughs> it doesn't seem to matter, but like a lot. It's like Kate Upton. She's like, I couldn't breastfeed. She's got the biggest boobs you've ever seen. You know, it's kind of a, you'll see. I don't stress about it. I'll you'll figure it out really quick. ridiculous boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Big sloppy naturals. Those are natural? They're a mess. Yeah. They're a hot mess. She's one of my favorite people. She's so awesome. She's pretty fucking. Yeah. She's rad. That video of her dancing in that fucking thing to this day. What of that? Is that a Carl's Jr. ad? I don't I know. have to pee. All right. Let's go. Guys, let's go. All right. Okay. I'm gonna, like... All right. Great episode. Whitney, have that baby. What if you give birth right now? Episode 300. 300, baby. Congratulations, Leanne Kreischer.